Three, two, two one. Monkey bars. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome all back. Whoa, to the Flip the Gutter podcast. I want. I definitely do not know what the fuck episode this is. I'll save you. Coming in for the assist, ninety three. Are you sure? Yes, I am. Because the uh, new moon was ninety two. Let's count. Let's count together, right? So at Wolf House was ninety. What happened? What happened after Wolf House? La Casa Lobo. The Casa Lobos. The Casa Lobos was number 90. <laughs> I'm Jesse, by the way, since we're just not doing the intro oh, yeah. anymore. Right. I'm Jesse, yeah. right, also let's... known as Butter. And also uh, really sick. Uh, what happens after the Casa Lobos? Did we do Bronson we did, after Yeah, that? this is a good episode. Okay, so yeah, we did Bronson. We, did, we haven't got a podcast in a bit. Hello, yeah. everybody. We haven't got a podcast We're back. In a bit. It's been a week. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know, I had to... I took a break. And he took I'm everything a, with him. I took everything the, with him. He I'm got custody idiot. of the kids. We, uh, the... <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> we took a week off, so we're a little flustered. But so I don't know what the fuck episode this is. I think it's <laughs> 90. We just posted 90. By the time yes. we're hearing this, it'll be fucking May, probably, yeah. or whatever. <laughs> yeah, honestly. <laughs> but, um, Castle Lobo, and then we did Dancer in the Dark, right? Oh, yeah, that's what it well, was. That's 91. 91. That's a crazy episode, I'm sad. sure. Sad. You know, I haven't listened to it. Sad. <laughs> yeah, we both cried. Yeah. An and then... And then podcast. we had the new, and then we had the new moon episode that happened after we, that. Yes, yeah, so we did another final episode that's coming out soon. Yeah. By the time you're listening to this, you'll definitely you'll be on, you'll be online. Yeah. Um, which, which is, again, this is the Twilight episode is a perfect marker to show how fucked up our schedule is because <laughs> if you follow our recording schedule, we are perfectly on track because <laughs> Twilight, the new moon, is the fucking March. Twilight, right, but it's not right. going to come out until mid-April. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why do you have to stop podcasting for like a week or two? Stop banking these fucking things. Yeah, just get to get get online. I don't know, like, because either it's it's weird. It's like weird living in the past. It makes it makes listening to the podcast like a little bit more enjoyable. I always enjoy Pretty listening funny. back, to them, <laughs> but because it's like, what did I say? <laughs> I don't yeah. remember what I fucking said. Like I texted you about me ranting about Nietzsche and nihilism and stuff. I was like, <laughs> yeah. What? I don't remember that at all. What kind of mood was I in? That's yeah. so weird. It's crazy. I was also thinking about too that you know there we have an audience right now of about thirty people. I would say the best thirty people out there and consistently. You know, like those thirty people that are listening. We don't know who you are. We don't know. What's your names are? I think a lot. I think we know your names. Some yeah, we actually we actually know a great majority of um, who you are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you, first of all, but also so much. I don't even remember what I was gonna say. Completely had forgot. some profound point about like our analytics it's at a podcast. God, it is completely <laughs> God. I had an interesting analytic. It is. So God, let's just gush about what the fuck I'm saying. <laughs> let's just gush about our audience. Then thanks, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Follow I knew you come Instagram, here. Twitter, um, uh, YouTube's. Hopefully, yeah. like we'll get the YouTube to be like very like high quality video at some point. Still recording the Zoom call, but you know, hey, you know, it's we can't we can't put us push ourselves to be too hard on ourselves about that because it's hard video is hard even though we're filmmakers and we know how it's hard, hard it was well, we it's underestimated not, it's not it. like it's hard it's hard when you're not in the same 
win. So right. you, you have to like record right. them. So you can call like a higher quality video instead of like yeah. slapping a camera down and fucking press record, baby. Yeah. A lot, a lot, a lot more complicated than that. But, yeah, because if we were together, we could just like have a two shot of you and me and just have the camera simultaneously recording. But we were doing yeah, exactly. it before. Do you remember that one time we tried doing a video and we would have to stop every 30 like minutes because I know. Uh, the that, camera that was never gonna gone. work. And then I sent you <laughs> about like 16 yeah. gigabytes of my video <laughs> file. Say, like, yeah. hey, here, fix, put this together. We yeah, can that... make this work. It will be simple, yeah. really. <laughs> yeah. That was a failure, man. <laughs> yeah, we could never. Like the idea that we were like, yeah, we went like a little, like this long car chase. Oh, shit. We <laughs> fucking stop recording. Damn it. Uh, and then the video was out of sync too it was a it, yeah it was yeah, a disaster super fun so a lot of technical difficulties yeah um uh, but you know we're good we're good fun anyway at least we're recording episode, a podcast episode 94. every week four no right no 93. <laughs> yeah <laughs> after all that um so did you went to so you just got back from and you were Aspen, skiing Colorado. and shit yes sir yes i was skiing yeah I skied for a day, one day, because it's expensive over there. So I only, yeah. did, I only did one day. But you were, you were at, like, you were at your friend's house most of the time, just yeah, chilling in Aspen. Yeah, who most likely is listening to this. Hey, <laughs> you're lives. one of the 30. Thanks, Max. We he do lives. know your name. We and know who this. you are. We know where you live. <laughs> <laughs> who lives in? There's a house in Aspen. And he's cool. living there for a while. So, um... Which is awesome, you know. Yeah, Aspen it's totally is sick. Amazing, beautiful, fucking one of the most beautiful places in the country. It's, it's absolutely gorgeous. And yeah, it was super fun. Just hanging out, making pigs, fucking. Oh, did you make music with them? That was them. Uh, just, just me, yeah. Just you. Yeah, <laughs> Exclusive. Just See, guys, fuck off for a bit. I, I have tunes to attend to. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they were they, they had some work to do while they were there too, so I kinda was also making music and it was fun. And then but skiing have you gone skiing before ever? I, I I have gone skiing. I enjoy skiing Where? a lot. Oh um, really? Yeah, not, oh, not cool. a lot. No, a lot is not the correct me sort either. of exaggeration yeah, of that. Uh, but my dad I've really likes skiing like six times in my whole life. I think I could say that I've done about six yeah. about that. There was one that I remember one winter that I went with my dad pretty frequently. Where did you go? So um, it was this park near Louisville. I want to say Paoli Peak, but I'm not sure if I'm getting okay. that mixed up with something yeah. else. Like that might yeah, be where, yeah, yeah. where you ski in Ohio. And yeah, I'm just right. getting confused with my memories. Yeah. But um, it was some area that was like 45 minutes from where I lived in Louisville. Right. And uh, me and my dad would go. And it took a little bit. I remember that the first time I went, it was a disaster. And I yeah. think like I panicked and my yeah. dad was like, okay, it's cool. Let's just go home and we'll come back tomorrow. And I was yeah, like, yeah, okay, yeah. dad. And we did it. And the next <laughs> yeah. day it was great. Yeah, but yeah. I was yeah. spooked the first day. It was spooked. What was the last time you see it? Was it like high oh, school? brother, it might've been that time, <laughs> honestly. Yeah, high, oh, really? Like, like that school? period of frequent skiing, like before high school. I don't think yeah. I skied from high school to, to college. Middle I never, never skied. Yeah. Yeah. So like I... I have like I skied a good amount. Like there's like a couple places like near my house on mountain, you know. <laughs> and uh, then we go there at like middle school, and, like lower school. That was fun. And like, but I was pretty good at it. Like I wasn't like amazing at it. And then I went <laughs> back there in high school, and. I was just, I mean, like, I was, I was skateboarder, so, like, I yeah. kind of, like, I, and I'm a pretty athletic person, so I could, like, get used to things. For some reason, when I skied in high school, you know, when you ski, you, like, carve. You know, you go, you know, left, right, you know, that's the whole Sure, deal. okay, yeah, yeah. Whole deal. I did not know that's what you called it. Carve? Carve, like car yeah. It's carving? I don't know if that's what it's called in a skiing, but. Car, oh, you know, like carving. And that's what it's called in, in skateboarding. Like skateboarding, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. 
I'm carving, bro. Yeah. Sick carve. Um, <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so that's what you do, right? You get all of that, and you like, you know, car, you know, car down the. <laughs> yeah, avoiding and trees so and when bears. I was in high school, when I would do that, I could do my left turn. Yeah, People, like my friends were like, "Holy shit, that's one of the best left turns I have <laughs> ever seen in my life!" Like yeah. incredible. And these people are like, they do their whole lives all the time. And like, and then I would do this like fucking gorgeous left turn, and then I would go right and just eat shit <laughs> like every fucking time, wow. every time. And like, it was miserable. It was a horrible day because I would like go down and just like, because <laughs> I couldn't like, I couldn't right turn. I was like, dude, how the fuck? And then it was, it didn't help with my friends making fun of me the whole time. Yeah. Like, it was fun, but it was also miserable. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> that was the last time I was doing prior to this. Like, I didn't go at all. Oh, wow. So, how's, your, how's your left turn? <laughs> so, dude, I was fucking scared of shit. Because, like, my friend, my friend Max, is incredibly good at skiing. Incredibly good. And the other friend that was there, Louie, shout out to Louie, he, like, it's kind of my level of student. Like, hasn't really seen that much, but, like, has seen enough where, like, I no, kind of know what I'm doing. Sure. And so, um, it was just him and I that went. And we went to, like, the biggest... And, dude, so, I went from going from seeing a mountain, you know, at, <laughs> at some resort in <laughs> Pennsylvania to Aspen, Colorado, which, yeah, we never been there, these mountains are fucking they are huge they yeah, are they ridiculous are. they are beautiful it's a real fucking mountain these so are size size was, d b d cup double d baby <laughs> and i was like nervous as shit because i was like bro i've never seen anything remotely like aspen like yeah. ever. like this yeah. place is known for skiing and so <laughs> uh i so i got skis we the, we're going up the first chairlift, and the chairlift took <laughs> 12 minutes. Oh my god, to get up there! And I was like, dude, and like by the sixth minute, I was like looking at the slope <laughs> and, and I was like, bro, dude, I'm fucking scared. And he was like, he was kind of looking at me like not that scared because he was like, dude, trust me, I was this scared when I did this the first time, like, you'll be totally fine, okay, like, okay, 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 and so. The first thirty minutes, so we're going down like blues, you know, you know, like blue. There's blues. Uh, is that black diamonds? Me, that's like yeah. the trail. I know the black diamonds hard. Yeah, yeah, that's like the difficulty of the trail. Green yeah. is like you know fucking baby trail. Blue I think is like I did. intermediate. I'm, black I'm a green boy. Black, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, so I was like, dude, we're just going down fucking greens and blues, bitch. That's that's what we're doing. <laughs> and so the, we go down a green slope first time. In like the first 30 minutes, I can't turn right. I'm fucking, ah. I'm going left, I'm doing like amazing left turns. It's literally, this is like seven years <laughs> or something, like the last time I see Same fucking deal. Wow. Left, amazing. Turn right, bam. And so the first 30 minutes, and then my buddy goes, you see, see me, he goes, you gotta commit. You gotta fucking commit to the right turn, dude. Like, he just like coached your yeah, butt. Yeah. He came so, out of the woodwork. Then sure enough, like I just started to commit, and then I just by the end of the day, we were going down like blues and shit. I was just like, I was good at steel. Like I just wow. kind of like, and so I was, dude. It was. I wish I had a GoPro because, dude. I mean, man, when you get to the top of the mountain. Yeah. And like there's this one chairlift called like El Camp. Well, first of all, Aspen has three mountains that you can see. Okay. Three of them. So there's Snowgas, <laughs> Ajax, and um oh, there might be four. H- H- Highlands and then Buttermilk. And there's like there's are all Butter- the mountains. Buttermilk. Buttermilk. <laughs> yeah. That's, That's a great one. name. Oh. We were on Snowgas. We were on the biggest mountain. Gotcha. And not the like 
hardest, but like the biggest one. Okay. And okay. So we were at the top of it, like the El Camp. We went all the way at the top, dude. Like when I was at the wow. top, like, I was skiing down. Yeah. When I looked up, and you just see this amazing kind of like mountain, you know, horizon. Yeah. Mountain. You are literally just like going down a mountain and it just snowed there wow. too. There's like amazing powder and as you're doing it. It's just, oh it, my dude, god. It was, I saw it, I was like, Yeah, skiing's fucking awesome. Skiing's super fun, but it's 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 just so beautiful in there. It's like you'll never I understand why people like skiing. You know, it's super yeah. fun. But like yeah, man, it's I know why people pay a lot of money to go do shit like that yeah know? i can't i can't even imagine doing something like skiing going down those heights even i went to uh, a park that's nearby called roxborough and i will if you come to boulder to yeah. like see me sometime we're gonna go there because uh i haven't been around very much i would say yeah, but right. this was in my experience like one of the most beautiful places i'd ever been in yeah, my yeah, life yeah, okay, it yeah. was it was um so you know the boulder mountains like what they look yeah, like they yeah. just look like yeah, they just yeah. look like plates that have lifted off off the ground right. so these are like the the place that we went has these red boulders that uh-huh. are, look like the grand canyon boulders they're they're pure red and they're huge and they jut out of the ground all over the place right. and it's like it's an hour away from where i live and it looks like i have gone to a completely different planet awesome. when i go down yeah. there yeah, and awesome. uh even i walked walked down there and walked down that mountain and i can't yeah. imagine what like skiing down something like oh, that yeah. and just yeah, like yeah. skiing and vibing yeah. and enjoying the scenery as you yeah. go down because one of my yeah. favorite things about that hike which i'm sure you get when you're skiing is how your perspective change as you walk like yeah. around it and yeah. you get higher right. because there's so many different layers of interesting to the environment yeah, exactly. when you yeah. when you get that altitude of shit because yeah. <laughs> we started when even when we started it was like so it felt like it felt like a video game when you stay in the same area but you progress throughout it and you can see oh that's where i started way down there (laughs) that's what it was like because (laughs) we started and these mountains these boulders were huge like around us like gigantic we're looking up all around and it's like this is amazing we feel like ants and then we walked up the (laughs) mountain pass and we got so high that it felt like i felt like i had died and i was looking at my life you know everything has like miniatures (laughs) and shit and i was like that's where we work (laughs) i can't imagine i can't imagine skiing something like that it's so so cool mountains are crazy mountains are fucking crazy it it was so fun though we did it for for like five hours or something that's awesome yeah it was oh it was so cool it's like if it wasn't so expensive i would tell you to like fucking drive down the aspen fucking go do that but it's expensive one day i mean the thing that sucks is like I was lucky because, like, for like a full day, for one day, it's like a hundred sixty dollars. Wow, it's just for the skiing for the pass, and then you have yeah. the red skis, which is like seven another seventy dollars. Wow, on top of that, oh my goodness, so it'd be like three hundred dollars, like per day. Yeah, but my buddy's parents had a half off coupon. Yeah, so I got and the half days were much cheaper. Cheaper, I didn't do a full day; I got a half day. Yeah, and it was sixty dollars, so I wow. spent a hundred dollars, hundred forty dollars. Like, well, that's worth it. Yeah. So, like, yeah, that was worth it to me. But still, um, that's an expensive thing to do. Like, that's, yeah, that's yeah, really expensive. exactly. That that was like twelve to four. So yeah. how do they how do they regulate like when your time's up? Will they come find you? So they you got like a, a tracker on you. They have a pass. Oh, that will they'll check at the ski lift. Yeah, and so All like right. what you can do is you got a full day before you go so you buy it yeah and then and then you have a, like a card that you just put in your jacket and it like goes on the card and then when you go on the lift there's like a scanner and it scans your pass yeah that way you can get on the lift and go up yeah um, and then the lifts close at four and if you want a half day pass yeah it will only let you in past 12 yeah so you have to yeah so that's how it works Okay, I had I have my I have formulated a a, a, a plan of escape of uh-huh. escaping your identity of your life. Uh-huh. So <laughs> so you get a ski pass for a day, right? 
and <laughs> you get you can get a half day or a whole day. It doesn't matter, right? You just tell yeah. everyone that you know. It's like, hey, I'm going skiing. And it, maybe you're having a hard time or something. So everyone's like, yeah, take uh-huh. a nice ski respite, friend. Uh-huh. We understand uh-huh. that you need it, but you, they uh-huh. don't know that you're gonna run away. So you're fleeing. So what you do uh-huh. is that you you, you, take, <laughs> you take the pass. Yeah. And you go, you go skiing all day, and you take the pass. You go, thank you. And you go up the mountain, but you don't come down. You take your skis and you ski away. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> you go down the other side of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be a pretty fucking skilled fucking skier. Hey, well, if you before, if you're gonna do this, you planned, right? You probably, you probably have gone. So the other thing you probably have done before well, this, the, this, this escape. The funniest part about that is <laughs> like. <laughs> Okay, like you just go down the other mountain away from all of civilization. Yeah, it's like you're, it's like <laughs> you're talking like this person's like trapped in Aspen or something and he's trying to get out. Yeah. You just go down the mountain, like you already bought the pass. Like, you, you go back home. Why is it going to go down the other mountain? Let's just get lost. <laughs> yeah. Die. Well, no, it's, it's it's the plan. The plan is to create a new life, you know, <laughs> yeah, adventure. Yeah, but, what is yeah, on the other side of the mountain? Thing about the story <laughs> is that, is, is that, like, why, like, why will this person like have to like escape his life? Yeah. In this extravagant ski-like from fashion. Aspen, well, that's Aspen, the story. Colorado. Well, that's that's the job of the screenwriter. Then, what is the point behind the escape? How do we how do we write a story around making it so a person needs to escape via going up a we ski mountain a, and never coming down? Bro, do you remember? Bro, this was like a long time ago. Now, Davies, but... Twinkies, D- yeah, Twinkie we, Dave. We fucking wrote a movie on here. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Dude. That was one of that's one yeah, of my dude, favorite. We gotta, write more, we gotta write more movies on this podcast. Yo, we could write. You want to write one right now? That's a prompt. Why does this man want to go over the ski mountain? Okay. Okay. So it's set in Aspen, Colorado. Yeah. Well, let's come up with a name for this man. It doesn't Dude, have to be a okay. man. Either. I think the movie should be. Um, okay. This is my first pitch. Okay. It's a you know, high class family, obviously. So yeah. they're living in Aspen, Colorado. Yeah. They live in the most beautiful house ever. I want to make this an existential crisis movie. You know, where this right. guy hates his life in beautiful Aspen, Colorado. He wants to be, I don't know, a carny. He sees a, a carnival on the TV and is like, that yeah. is for me. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to be uh, a clown. You know, yeah. he, he, he's like, I, I, have, <laughs> I have this amazing accounting firm, <laughs> but I really want to be a clown. Okay. So, um- I this like leads this. him to come up with this plan to escape his family. Okay, okay. Here's another thing I think we should add to this character trait. I think that everyone should think that this guy is completely incompetent. Like, he can't do shit. He <laughs> completely yeah, yeah. fails at fucking yeah, everything. People, He's yeah. stupid as fuck. Exactly. No one gotta, believes he has <laughs> any capacity. You gotta, you gotta, the, the world is just punching this guy. Got, what's his name? He's just Punching bottle uh, cap Joe, bottle cap Joe, <laughs> Bo- bottle cap, Bo- bottle cap. Let's call him bottle, bottle cap. cap. <laughs> bottle cap J Jones, J Jones. Um, yeah, but oh, I love this. So, like, okay, so the Jones family. Wait, wait, let's come up with a let's come up with a better last name. Like, what's a regal regal high class <laughs> name? Bottle cap, bottle cap. Um. um uh, Humphrey Bezos. <laughs> Bezos. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do a, let's do a, let's do a variation of Bezos. Let's do like a uh, we could do Bezzy Bottle Cap Bezzy <laughs> <laughs> Bottle Cap Bezzy. <laughs> I bottle like that they Bezzy. maybe they named him Bottle Cap because they like saw him like this guy's a dud. Let's name him Bottle Cap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's do let's do shot no use Bottle Cap. <laughs> Then we then we could then the movie could have this theme of like um Just finding bottle caps everywhere. Yeah, finding oh, that could be the name of the movie, dude. It could bottle be called cap. finding finding bottle caps. Bottle cap. <laughs> bottle cap. And you could have it's a sign the existential crisis of am I a bottle cap? Am I a bottle cap? Why would they call me bottle cap? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, what how about his name? His name is Bobcat, and but his nickname is Bottle Cap to everybody around in the yeah. town. Oh, I know? like that. Yeah, and his that, nickname is that, Bobcat. That was the, and then we see a flashback scene in the movie where he was bullied as a kid, and we were like, "You fucking!" <laughs> the kids were like drinking their Pepsi. <laughs> throw bottle cap. caps. And then, yeah, and then <laughs> fucking bottle cap walks by and they go, <laughs> "Fuck you, bottle cap!" And we start throwing <laughs> bottle caps at him. And so now we see that scene, and we see that, and he walks into a Seven Eleven, and he's like, "Man, I'm thirsty." And he goes up to our last party. movie had a Seven Eleven in it. There could be a theme of our movies. They all have Seven Eleven. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! And then he goes into the Seven Eleven, sees the Pepsi bottle, yeah, opens it, and has like the trauma, you know, and, like drops it. It's like, <laughs> and he goes out. So yeah, I think the fear of bottle caps <laughs> oh, oh, definitely God. be in the movie. That would be a that'd be a bottle cap. He'll shit himself. Or I he... love maybe 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 like after his trauma of going up the Aspen buttermilk buttermilk peak and coming down buttermilk the other side of buttermilk he yeah. uh, he goes to the civilization and people find this wandering man but he's like a mute and can't talk and he's all haggard and they like hand him a soda and he's like <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong with this man. <laughs> <laughs> is it coke son <laughs> and the other great thing about that is that we can have so much product placement in there yeah, we could exactly. have all the product placement with well, the classic I'm, coke I'm starting to rethink that I don't even know if the box, I don't even know if we should include the, <laughs> the flashback of why he's afraid of bottle caps I think the whole movie he should just have this trait that he's afraid of Pepsi or like a, <laughs> oh, oh dude, God. wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's no, great. That's because... the reveal of the movie. Oh, the reveal of the movie is that, oh my God, bottle caps are his weakness. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what is this movie? Is this an action movie? Because yeah. now I'm thinking of it as an action movie. So now I'm thinking like. Like with his weakness, like his kryptonite. Yeah, so cap. what I'm thinking is like. Well, I also like the oh, name, no, like his. The, so that whole thing is the opening of the movie. Him escaping, you know. Oh, like, his, I like that. That's not like the climax. It's the becomes, opening. Yeah, he becomes a fucking, he's a secret operative. Or he's a secret, you know, mm. fucking guy who's been living this fake life in Aspen, Colorado. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So wait, he's dude, John what? Wick, but afraid of bottle caps. Dude, okay, and what about? Call... <laughs> I like this. What What if we make it? What if we make it that like he goes over the mountain and no one knows who he is, you know? And yeah. then they and they uh they they name him bottle caps because he's scared of bottle caps because all these people are dicks i guess right. and then and then he turns into a carny but he gets he gets since he gets so fit from being a carny so he turns he... into a crime fighter yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then and then the last half no, of the movie his family a, come looking for him movie, yeah it's a, yeah, yeah yeah but, and but then the but, subplot is the family's looking for him and then and he, at the end of the movie they discover they go to the carnival and they see god doing a fucking routine and they're like is that is that papa <laughs> wait then, the dad's a carny too <laughs> no i thought i thought no i thought Bobcat, he's a carny. Yeah. Oh, right? oh, and the dad sees him doing the carny routine. Well, his children see him oh, doing. Yeah. That's the end of the movie. After yeah. he succeeds, and they and it's a and the kills final all movie. These bad guys that we haven't come up with yet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that. We gotta come like up. That. Who's the villain? What's the, the villain? conflict of the movie? Okay, what if the conflict is? Yeah, we have the per. That, that is the perfect setup. Okay. Escape from his family. Watching him become a clown party, becomes yeah. a clown party, gets so good at it, and he becomes a vigilante. Yeah. And he starts fighting crime 
in the outskirts of Aspen, Colorado. Yeah, dude. Okay, this is good. Yeah, I he, like. He becomes the Aspen. He becomes the Aspen Batman, where he fucking <laughs> is the protector of Aspen. Protector of Aspen bottle cap. <laughs> I, 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 I like. Okay, I have a few things. So I think we should keep. <laughs> I think we should keep the character trait of him being really stupid. So like he's stupid and like incompetent and like can't really doesn't really talk that much, but he's like a really great vigilante. So and it's like everyone talking about him, but he doesn't really have much of a personality because he's so stupid. And then like the whole I think the conflict of the movie should be twofold. I think there should be his arch nemesis, you know, anti bottle cap. And then also the identity piece where his Cork family screw. comes. Corkscrew. Yeah. Cor- Dude, that's <sighs> good. That's fucking good. Bottle cap and corkscrew? Are you fucking kidding me, dude? Dude, okay, well, we could have a whole other aspect to it. This is a bad idea, but I'm going to pitch it anyways, just you know, just to get it all <laughs> That was table. a good idea. No, corkscrew is a great is idea. Is corkscrew. Are you kidding me? That's That should be in a mainstream movie. What are you talking about? That's insanely good. Corkscrew? The corkscrew? The corkscrew? But we could have the thing where if it's like bottle cap and corkscrew, we could have it at the end where maybe if he's just like an incompetent baby, maybe this is a fantasy he made up. Or we could do it. Wait. Wait, yeah. what if we do this like Baron Munchausen? What if we take it like this? So it's like a fantasy like event, but it's like a it's like a it doesn't ever make it like it's like all in his head. It's just like this sort of fantasy yeah, right. like perspective from Bottle Cap, who's kind of like this man child. And we shoot it like like uh it'll shot like a fucking um like <laughs> half the characters are animated. <laughs> yeah, it's like super fucking weird. It's like a corkscrew, darkly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Corkscrew should be animated. I oh, dude, I see it. I see the whole movie I in my it. brain. I'm I watching it. it right now. And then Garfield <laughs> becomes a sidekick. <laughs> <laughs> it just gets better and better, dude. We gotta get the rights to Garfield, and then we can write him in the movie. We're basically one step away. How are we going need... to that? I need to, I need to, who owns Garfield? I need to call him up and I need to go yeah. and say, listen, <laughs> I think Garfield would really add a lot to our movie. And I think <laughs> you guys would benefit a lot for having Garfield in this. And we, we want the Bill Murray Garfield, please. Yeah. We don't want the animated. We don't want to do. We want the specific Gar- Gar- Garfield incarnation of Bill Murray in the horribly CG animated form. And we, and we know that Mr. Murray is pretty busy, so if you can get someone that kind of sounds like him, we'll accept that. Right. You know? But we got to get the animation, that CGI from that movie, it has to be exact, dude. We'll, we'll honestly we'll give accept, us that footage. We'll, we'll use yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Bill Murray, a guy who sounds like Bill Murray, Murray or his, if his name or, sounds like Bill Murray, or that's cool too. The only one who's actually, or Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Those yes. Three, yeah. yeah. Those, that will be good. But uh, other than that. Okay. Okay. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. I had a whole nother idea for the bottle cap story. I had a whole nother idea. Okay. So, you know how we did Stuart Little retrograde, where we just did Stuart Little backward and it turned into a fantastic movie? You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. Which, if we wrote that, I'm still one day I'll write a screenplay and I'll show everybody that that is really Stuart weird. Little Four. Let's do it, Little Four. But okay, my my <laughs> point is, written by Jesse <laughs> you know, imagine you work at like Universal and you're the dude who like good scripts and you get a script that says Stuart Little Four, written by Jesse Lanier, <laughs> and you just got it like in the mail, like someone sent it to you. Oh god. Me, if I sent it to them from Jesse Lynn, yeah. by Jesse, and Lanier. it got in the hands, and they and they saw it. You know, if that if they and got they in only, their hands, and they don't even own the rights to Stuart Little. They <laughs> 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 can't even make a Stuart Little movie. Yeah, I forgot what my thought. Oh, I was gonna say that we could make. The idea has dissipated a little bit. My enthusiasm for it, I've, I've settled a little bit and it doesn't it sound new, as good to me. It was a new idea. It was just take, it was we basically just redo Theodore Rex. 
as and the, as the story of Bottle Cap. Uh, I can't believe we had a car about that movie on this podcast. Well, the problem with the Theodore Rex thing is that we had it was all set up. We watched it together, and then COVID hit, and we were too sad to talk about Theodore Rex. Oh my god, COVID. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Um, yeah, dude, I think Bottleneck <laughs> and Corkscrew is going to be a big hit. Did you say Bottleneck? Bottle. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the name of our fucking IP bottle, bottle character. Cap, bottle cap and corkscrew. Bottle cap. I think it's going to be a good hit. I think it's going to be a bigger hit when I need some Twinkies or whatever. That movie's be <laughs> I need some Twinkies. That's not what it was called, but it's going to be called that. <laughs> <laughs> I need some Twinkies. Oh, oh. Sure. Oh, I need some Twinkies, man. But yeah, I think uh, I think we're gonna do the next Coen Brothers, man. I yeah. think we have, if we can, if we, we can do incredible ideas. Oh, why does this always happen? I always like every time I crack, I have, I've had, a, I have a near disaster. This is all foam up here. I cracked a beer and oh. it almost spilled everywhere, but it's perfectly encapsulated in the. Fuck it. Is this called a uh, surface tension that's keeping the bubbles here? <laughs> I don't know. Surface tension. Yes. Go. I'm really dumb. I don't know. Oh, dude, I wanted to talk to you about Vince Staples. Um, <laughs> because oh, yeah. I, I listened to Big Fish Theory. You're right, you're right, you're right. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, Big, yeah, Fish Fish Theory, Theory. Yeah. Big Fish Theory explains so much shit to me. Yeah. Like it it links up so much of modern hip hop. It like it's like the oh, transition sure. yeah. of like from oh, what was tra- of like like the more Kanye sounding dominated shit yeah. to like the stuff we have now. It's like I think big fish also theory. kind of like I think what you're talking about is like I don't even like hip hop. I mean I like big fish theory. I think there's like I think like lyrically, um Big Staples kind of like like there's songs that are just like like, like I think there's a song on there called like seven forty five where he's just rapping about getting in his car. That was like Yeah. That song, yeah, that song's not seven, the best topic ever, but seven forty five. Hope I can yeah, pick you up yeah, at yeah. seven forty five. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, oh, dude, somebody please snip that, <laughs> put that on the beat. <laughs> of that. Um, but uh, it's not too far off. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. but, no, I think the production on that album is fucking awesome. It's yeah. It's sure it's it kind of like it's like, you know, Sophie Hunter Gax, like the double down bass kind of like distorted yeah. fucking thing that was going on around that time. Especially when like Charlie X X started doing her thing. Yeah, and, yeah. All of that shit. Staples is definitely that part shit. of that. You know, I, that album's really cool. I just love the songs like um there was a couple like 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 songs like 745 is a great Big example. Fish. I love Big Fish. Big Fish yeah. is an amazing song. But there's a couple of songs like Yeah Bright, um oh my God. fucking yeah. Backpack, fucking Crabs oh, in a Bucket. All of those songs. Yeah, all, those are the best songs. Oh, love can be yeah, love can be yeah, i was like yeah, listening yeah. to those and i was like dude this is like this is like a i'm going on a fucking odyssey these are crazy these are so cool i love okay crabs in a bucket is like one awesome. of the best openers to any like yeah, album I've ever yeah. Heard. it's yeah. like such a because it's so yeah, fucking cool. weird it's yeah. so <laughs> weird yeah yeah i know Crabs in a bucket. Crabs <laughs> <laughs> yeah. in a bucket. <laughs> yeah. It's so yeah. sick. I love that shit. It's really I bizarre. Love that, that, shit. that movie, that album has like a big like cult following. Like people like, there's like a lot of people that fucking like love that album. I love it too. I it's wasn't really as into cool. FM as I was. Yeah, I like FM fish. more. I, I don't I didn't like it as much because yeah. it was more it was fine but it was like it was like a better versions of the songs I didn't like as much on Big Fish. Well, Theory. I thought it was more like uh, it's yeah. more of like what I like about that album a lot is it's a throwback to like old school hip hop, so it's like it yeah. has like this like really like nostalgia from like fun yeah. kind of nineties vibe. I still really like love that album. I liked really it a fun. lot. There's like there's a couple of songs on. I thought that are like, like fun is awesome. That's all yeah. super, super 
great. Just want to have fun. But yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah Luke Staples, yeah, he's awesome. He, he has like a crazy, he has such a great demeanor while rapping. He's so, um, you know, he's a lot, he's like, he's been comparing a lot of like Snoop Dogg, like early Snoop Dogg. And he's from like, he has that charisma, that same kind of like, yeah, like just instantly, yeah, dude, yeah, charisma. I know. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that it's like you sound like you're 19, but you also sound like you know everything, and I believe you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's Snoop Dogg. <laughs> yeah, when you listen to fucking Doggy style, like I was listening to that the other day. He was 19, and wow. he was rapping like I mean, you're like, dude, is he like 40? Like he, he just has this confidence, and you're like, bro, what the fuck? Um... Yeah. You know, um, and it's it's yeah. interesting with people who can do that. You know that they're either like really cool people or yeah, fucking right. psychopaths. Yeah, like yeah. fucking yeah. crazy. And both of those guys feel like they're pretty cool people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who's an example of like a psychopath? But well, Kanye's kind of like that. He's kind of like yeah. a psychopath version. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so confident in himself, it's like you're speaking truths, but you're I don't know where that's coming from. It's coming from Crazy yeah. Town. <laughs> <laughs> God, I'm kind of something else. <laughs> like I just, I, I, he was endlessly fascinating, but just so flawed in so many ways. But that's what kind of makes him interesting. Yeah. Well, flaws, flaws are the character trait of like, the, it's just what makes people relatable. You know, yeah. when they have flaws, that's what they gravitate towards. Yeah. Because that's what you see in yourself. You only see your flaws. So when you right. see flaws in other people, it's instantly relatable. Exactly. Yeah. He, he's just he's just more upfront about it. <laughs> and like, well, he, a public guy. he has no choice because that's he has no filter. Thing, right? Yeah, it's a filter, but it's a weird thing to like. I can't imagine being like somebody like Kanye or like these uber famous people that like. Like like Britney Spears, is she who's been the news about like her like person being like their controller or something? Britney like, Spears. Yeah, Britney Spears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah she was yeah, talking that, about yeah, like how a, that affected her life. Yeah, that's a crazy story. Um well, yeah, well I yeah, that people controlling you, but also living your life in front of people. Like yeah. Not just like living your life, but like they know everything about you. Yeah. It's a weird, it's not, it can't, it is undoubtedly unhealthy to like literally. People that like, we shouldn't know that Kanye got divorced from his wife. And it's yeah. so public, you know? We know yeah. almost every detail about the Kim Kanye. I don't, but you can, you can look it up. Yeah. You can find every detail about it. And it's like, man, wow. I can't imagine like the world knowing. My, my personal life i've been becoming more sensitive to that after think trying to build taking steps to building a legitimate artist art like audience for my art yeah. I, that has been occurring to me more and more because it's like it's like the golden handcuffs that come with success yeah. because it's like such a huge it's the, what you're talking about it's like it's a huge burden to decide if like okay well yeah, I could make money. People could love me. All this stuff. I could have fame or whatever. But then, like, I would turn into that if I got famous. It's like that has yeah. that is kind of terrible. It's kind of terrible to have your life dictated I, in that way. I think it's weird. I think like fame is something that's like so bizarre because everybody kind of wants it to some degree, yeah. where you like want to be noticed. But at the same time, like a lot of these people are like, maybe you don't want it. Like you, you risk, you, you kind of get to that point, and then a lot of people when they get there don't want it anymore. You know, yeah. they're just kind of like terrified of it. But I, I think, think, like, I think like it's good to like think of that. Like when you are starting to post on social media a lot more, and, like try to like build an audience. It's good to like know before you start doing it like okay how much am i planning on the, like reveal you yeah. know or yeah like about myself that's the thing that's ironic about this is like kage could have easily not done that could have easily 
that like I don't I'm not gonna talk to people, I'm not gonna you know, his music's so great. That's what made him famous. And yeah. personality is like a nice add on to that, what made him like a superstar. But his music is it's it is genre it is like genre and a gener generation defining music. Right. <laughs> so right. he doesn't have to go out and do these interviews and these wild interviews and this PR bullshit. You don't have to do any of that. Yeah. Sign a fucking record label, release our fucking albums, see ya. You know, like that's, he could do that, but yeah. he chooses not to do it. And I think this some is, of these this, this, like, this... artists, she, like The Weeknd is an amazing example. He was somebody who uh, literally, no one, when his first three, I would say, genre and you know, generation defining mixtapes came out in 2010, 2011. No one knew what he looked like for mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. for years, for probably like two or three years. No one knew what he looked like. Yeah. He had this look like, you know, That's like crazy. there's no pictures of him. Yeah. And no one knew what he looked like until he performed his first show. Yeah. And, um, and ever since then, he's been like very like he doesn't do a lot of interviews. You don't find like a lot of weekend interviews. Like, yeah, yeah, you don't. I don't know anything yeah, about like, his life at all. Yeah, exactly. And he is look how big he is. He's yeah, he's one of the best Super Bowl performances I've ever seen. You know, yeah. the Super Bowl. You know, yeah, you don't know who he is. Like you're yeah. gonna. So there's a choice that you could. There's a way People... to go about revealing your life, like like what Rock Hampton does. I. I personally, when they first started, they would post a lot of stuff about them and do a lot of Instagram lives and go hanging out and stuff. And that's a great approach too. But like, because you really get the audience, like an audience to really like love you, the people that feel like they know you. And then yeah. sometimes they kind of do uh, because they just literally are just watching you kind of, you know, grow. And do like yeah. That. Yeah, but that like that like that's what they like Tyler and Rock Hampton and all these things have like super crazy fan bases in the internet age. So it is different in the internet age that we have to uh, feel like that. Oh look, who, here's who I am. Here's who I am. But in reality, if the music's great, they're gonna listen to the music. Like they don't care. If, like you're like this personality. There's but there's, there's so many different ways to do it. That's what yeah. I'm saying is you have a choice. Artists have a choice to like how they navigate promoting their music and what they want to be shared and what not to be shared. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, I, I think that that authenticity is a really powerful authenticity, thing. Authenticity, yeah. And that's the thing that's what that people care about. Yeah, I think people really gravitate towards that. And you hear that, like, if you're starting out on, you know, making YouTube videos or being a Twitch streamer, right. it's just like, just be authentic, be yourself. You hear right. that told to middle school. It's something you hear throughout your life. You go into middle school, it's just yeah, like, exactly. what do I do? What do I say to these people? Just be yourself. Just be yourself. What do I say to this girl? Just be yourself. Just be yourself. Be authentic. You know, and that's, I think, I think that's all, that's a, a universal thing that's always true. Because if you're not yourself, then what the fuck are you doing with your yeah, life? Right. Yeah, you're yeah, wasting yeah. your life if you're not yourself. Yeah. But then we're also learning and seeing with this shit, which like The weekend and Kanye is like a really cool example because it's showing how these people are getting better at being celebrities, how to be yeah. celebrities better, right. you know? Yeah. Because well, The weekend is look still... Look at the whole Little Nas X situation. You, you yeah. About that. What the fuck, man? Wait, 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 wait. Clue me in. What's happening? I don't so know. You, oh, you, you're not aware of this? I don't know what's happening. Well, Cloudless comes yeah, out and this, this will be like two weeks. So he just released a new track called Call Me Liar Name and with a music video. Uh -huh. And the song, I think, is actually quite great. I think it's actually Little Nas X's best song that he's ever made. Um, oh, like, cool. Good for Little Nas. And you know, he's, you know, he's openly gay, you know? Um, yep. And so the song is uh, definitely his rockiest song, too. Um, and it is more revealing to it's kind of about his thing. He's not a guy. The song is about a, like literally about a guy. Called okay. Name. 
Montero or whatever. And uh, <laughs> so there's that. He's like this giant pop star being overtly gay. You know? Yeah, right, right. And then on top of that, the music video, you know, you know anything about what I'm saying? Like, he, his music videos, holy shit. I mean, they are really well produced. Something else. And so this newest one has him. It's like a heaven and hell situation. He's like an angel. He kisses, he like has sex with this, like, or kisses or insinuates with this uh, angel. And then he's sent to hell. Well, that was it. And then he like grinds on the devil and like puts the devil. It's a great music video, right? Wow. Amazing. It's really funny and cool and creative. But as you may expect, Insane outrage, man. I mean, oh, yeah. insane. Like, just do some, like, Google. Like, is this what I've been seeing about, like, this is going to turn your son gay? Is that what this yes. is coming oh, from? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've been yeah, seeing this a lot. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, why yeah, is this yeah. Why is this getting so popular again? Yeah. Everything and, makes the, sense the, now. Anthony Fantano actually just did an uh, interview with Little Nas X, which is kind of crazy. You should check that out. Anthony Fantano is He's such a it. phenomenon. He's what a crazy... It, right? th- what... Jeez. I've been watching him for years too. It's cool to see him, like, you know, yeah. be like that little guy's nice answer to me. I mean, he did it at the perfect time, and it's well, he's, he's one of those popular artists, like, right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, he talks about, like, that whole interview is interesting to watch because that's the whole interview. It's like 30 minutes of him just asking questions about, like, the, the controversy and stuff. And it proved that little guy's X is kind of a genius when it comes to the internet and stuff because not only is he making memes out of these people who are calling him out like fucking Ken Owens and all wow these that's smart conservative people he's clouding them on twitter like just completely like just be like just don't there be like Ken Owens said something like oh yeah now Cardi B's woman of the year it's basically Ken Zellens, I, I don't want to go on a rant. I fucking hate her. I think she's yeah. a fucking moron. I don't know um, her. She's a I black don't... woman. She's, she's a black conservative that is anti-black. She's a fucking wild part. She's a fucking whoa. She's a shit. That's book. that's a that's a creative uh, perspective. Yeah. So she like doesn't like hip hop. All these black people getting Cardi B woman of the year. Bad. That's bad. Like interesting. Why? Like what? You shouldn't be celebrating this, and also, no one cares who the fuck the woman of the year. Like I don't know, like what the woman of the year? What? What does that even mean? The, yeah. the man of the year? What are you talking about? <laughs> uh, but why are you gonna upset about that? It doesn't make any sense. But it's uh, but he is basically just plotting these people. But he made a video. What's well, so crazy about the controversy is like all these like religious people are coming out like. Oh my God, who's, you know, <laughs> like being gay? Like, they are completely misinterpreting what the fucking video even is. Like, yeah. The video, like, the video literally calls out these people. Like, he literally made this video. He knew that this was going to happen. Like, he yeah. knew it because he's literally in the video uh, for being gay, being condemned to hell, and says, fuck it, and grinds on the devil's dick. Yeah. And yeah. puts on the devil horn and say, hey, look, bitch, I'm the devil now. So he's literally like being like, fuck you. This is all fucking bullshit. You know? Yeah. And, and he literally knew by putting those horns on in the video, like, I'm the devil, man. Come at me, man. People are going to, and dude, it has gotten wild. And then uh, with the song, too, he released the, the shoes. He's like, Nike. Collaboration shoes with the with the song. Came oh, out. with the human blood. Is that what that was? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. And then Nike's suing the company because they're what? Satan shoes. Yeah. Nike is. Yeah. Why is Nike suing them? Because, Why do they care? Because, because it's satanic. It's fucking wow. Six 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 or whatever. And you know, I love this. I love this. I love this whole thing. Because it reveals so many, like, 
this is great because it's really revealing how kind of controlling you know religion is you know yeah. and how fucking stupid and like just not accepting to art that people are and it's, yeah and it's not like to the point where like it's bigger than just like a twitter thing like it's on the news it's on like you know it's it's yeah. good news because one of the biggest pop stars in the world is fucking gay yeah uh, <laughs> which is you know in, in 2020 like that is it's it's fascinating because it's like wow i can't wait for these old fucking people to just fucking die man I'm just fucking it cracks get off, get out of here I mean, this a... is oh it's ridiculous man it's crazy to me that uh how stupid these people, well, just people in general are, just, you know, they're, or they're uneducated. The things that are like, it's the same thing with like, and it's also just pretty racist. I mean, whatever, like a black, a black, let alone a black dude, man. Oh my God, you know. Yeah. And then when like WAP came out, or when fucking WAP came out, the party we saw, you know, the controversy behind that, it was like these women can't talk about sex. It's like, guess what, bitch? Yeah. Like, it's like shut up and not listen to a song. Like it's, Jesus Christ. It's so trying to, try to cancel these people for making a song about wet ass pussy. <laughs> Just the fuck, like what the fuck? You have better things to do, man. It's like, so crazy how how far this fantasy has gone because if you think about it, it's not people you're people dead, you're going to hell. <laughs> well, the other thing is that it's just that people don't want are just upset when they're reminded that they what kind of world they actually live in you know yeah, because it's right. just like like little Nas, it's awesome that little Nas s is doing shit like that but there's it a is. shit ton of people who are doing things so much more worse and so much more controversial yeah and these people yeah. out there are just like acting they just like they just like i don't see it i don't like me not appreciating it or liking that music yeah. means that it doesn't exist it's just like are you, how stupid are you and then, and then you live also, on the same planet with this shit also, All gotta, this just still yeah. exists and also the, the whole fantasy behind this will curl my gay my son gay you are a fucking oh moron my god this whole like fantasy of like kids watching something that, that like make them violent or something like that like how about we start regulating what your fucking kids watch you fucking yeah. moron parent like yeah, yeah you don't want your, your kids shouldn't maybe your kids shouldn't be watching little guys that's gonna be you know maybe you shouldn't guess yeah. what you could not you could make that happen you fucking idiot like you could make that hey don't watch little guys that stuff <sighs> don't tell him to make a certain thing what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah, like, and the other the other thing just about don't show the video or the block other, the video. The other perspective about it is that like if it does make your son gay, what it's what you're actually what's actually happened is if someone watches Little Nas S and realizes they're gay, is that it's actually a great piece of art helping someone exactly. figure out their identity. So That's a good a thing. Exactly. That's a really good right. thing. If someone watches Little Nas S video and realizes I'm gay, exactly. that's awesome. Yeah, Can you, the whole idea that's, that, that's fucking yeah. beautiful. If you yeah. have any piece of art and you realize yeah. who you are, yeah. that's that's what yeah. makes that's I mean, so that's, sad. I mean, that's I mean, so that's sad that people want to say the interview where it's like that's what he said. He like made it because like what he wanted to make people mad. So one thing yeah but mostly, which is awesome kudos yeah, was mostly was that like he wanted to you know he wants to be you know like for a gay kid young gay kid who sees that you know like you know feel open to you know come out as gay if he's scared or or whatever you know yeah like yeah it's absolutely right like i just i applaud that a little as X because I think like he is you know, it's amazing because when old we'll, Cow we'll kind of it out, you know, everyone was like, Oh, that's a fun song. But I we all thought this was like gonna be a fad, you know, it was like a one hit wonder and it was like Absolutely. We Absolutely. all did. We all did. Hell no. Um, who is here to stay? And I think yeah. like he's just he's well, just such a bold pop artist. So it's like even, really fun to see. Even know? if he even he's also made a stance that even if he isn't necessarily going to be 
making huge, huge influence with like in terms of musical he's has a great impact in terms of the cultural impact yeah, exactly, made, right, which is right. another great pop which is a powerful thing that music can do which is just like okay maybe we're not like pushing necessarily like the artistic values of this but yeah. if you can make this like some kind of cultural difference or things like that which i mean not to say that his music isn't worthwhile musically yeah like at all he just hasn't really released a lot of it yeah, that's right. the only that's the only reason yeah. i say that yeah yeah, I mean, like, I mean, yeah, I mean, he's, he's pop music. He's not, he's not trying to, he's not trying to reinvent the wheel or anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I think uh, he knows that. I mean, like, I mean, that's just who he is. That's the music that he makes. You, know, you see this guy, he's fucking a goofball. You know, he's yeah. fucking, he's a fucking weirdo. He's like, he, he made a song called Panini. It was about, yeah, like, which is an amazing I, song. Which is a good song, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's awesome. Song. It's still a great pop song. <laughs> Super fun, but dude, Panini, Pani? like <laughs> the, the, the chowder character, uh, like <laughs> he's a weird dude. Like he's a weird yeah. dude, and so, but I, I just love this man. I just love the Billy Eilish. I love the post love. I love the fucking. I just think it's cool. There's these fucking pop artists that are like weird and like out there. And I think about that with uh with YMS, with I YMS being a gay furry, an open gay furry. <laughs> yeah. I that's think that great. that's fucking badass, dude. Yeah, I cool. think that's fucking yeah. great. He has a huge especially, fan base, especially on the internet. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. it's, it's so dope. I love seeing yeah. shit like that. <laughs> yeah. Um. Cool. Well, we should talk about the movie. You want to talk about the movie? Sure. Are we ready to talk about the movie? You get your hold on. Okay, you want, well, take off your pants for a second and to put them back on. Just to off. prep yourself. You're already off. Okay, we'll already put them off. back on real quick. You've been aerating enough. It's time to secure the boys. Put them in a safe place. Make them feel comfortable. Settle down for the ride. We're in for. We're what in is the cure? <laughs> <laughs> um. So this week. Yeah. This week, the week after the Twilight episode. Uh, whatever, whim, week this is. whatever week it is uh which is april fool's day fool's days actually it's april 1st in our time right now whatever right. whatever whenever you're listening it's probably not april 1st but for us it is well, it's april 1st in 8 26 <laughs> uh colorado time bold colorado time yeah. um anyways so i picked crouching tiger hidden dragon completely on a whim because i picked it up right. at the thrift store um uh-huh. ages ago and i just had it here have and- you seen it I saw it a long time ago with my dad and uh-huh. I realized after watching it this time that I didn't get it at all, but I, I like yeah. enjoyed it as a kid, but I didn't really remember it that well. Right. And I saw this and I was like, Oh, I've seen this before and I know it's great. So it's like, it's worth me buying the DVD for $1 from a thrift store because like I should watch it again. Cause I'm like, I went to school yeah. for film, so I should check uh, it out. <laughs> um, and I, I, I rewatched it a day ago uh-huh. yesterday last night and it's become one of my favorite films really it's become one of my, my favorite yeah, I was fucking about it because film. i have i only watched this once yeah I only, this is the first time i've seen it like i have never seen it before really yeah yeah cool and so i um this is basically yeah, my first time experience too i like yeah i mean i like it i don't like i'm not like in love with it like Oh man, like I adored all. this film. I adored yeah, this so, film. So like I was just gonna talk about it. Maybe I just didn't get it, or maybe I was just in a mood that I wasn't Okay, out okay for this or well, let, something, but... let me let me let me let me let me like just give some context for the film and then I wanna hear yeah. like what your thoughts okay. are. Like what was like your your unsuredness about it. So this film, um and maybe we'll explain some things when I talk about it a little yeah. bit. Um, so this film was it was made in 2000 and it's a it's called a a wuxia film i'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it Uh but it's basically that means a chinese martial arts film is what it's centered around and this was a revolutionary version of that because of its blending of genre types in terms of that it had an actual story in addition to groundbreaking uh choreography and fight sequences and stuff and it was also revolutionary because um, it was a huge success internationally. Yeah, right. Americans goddamn right. loved this film in 2000. Right. It came out and yeah. they were all about this shit. It was right. crazy. It was all over the place. Right. So this was like a huge piece in this genre. And what this movie is about 
is it's about a legend of a legendary sword that um that is uh, belongs to this legendary warrior who decides to give it up because he's having he had this he's having these doubts about his path on being a warrior right and then it also unveils that it's a it's a romantic love story between uh multiple characters Mm -hmm. but then it's also they also uh so it's 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 a it's a it's sort of it's a it's a fighting story and it's a love story and it's a sort of a convoluted family kind of drama yeah, too right, on yeah, top of that right. so it's a lot of blending of these different of these different types of things and um and yeah so i think we'll we'll probably start del- del- delving into more yeah. about the different types of plot synopsis but the things yeah. that it was really regarded for was just being such a hybrid right. of all of these yeah, genres. Right. Um, it's also came it, out around the same time as the matrix Mm-hmm. <laughs> saying, well, the people who made the Matrix worked on this film okay, too. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah but, they're they're people involved um, with this film. So like that might have led to the success in America as well because, because of the, the action like, fan- the fascination. Action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that like okay, Angley Angley directed this movie. Yeah, and I, I mean, I really like Angley. I mean, I I broke out loud is one of like the most like it's hilarious i love seen. imagining angley directing brokeback mountain it's like one of yeah. my favorite things to imagine yeah, yeah, that's yeah. so it's, funny to yeah me. it is funny that movie is amazing beautiful Incredibly beautiful powerful. film yeah amazing film um and i i like life of pie i like life of pie i, I haven't seen people, life of pie i know some people don't like it but i i like life of pie and I don't know, man. I think I just was like not. I wasn't like everything about this was like great. Like everything, like, it looked great. It was the action was great. A little goofy, like sometimes, but um, just because people were flying, and I was like, okay, I gotta look this up because this is I, like I couldn't get into it. Like she was just li- uh. literally flying. I so love I was that. Like, I love that. But about like, the film. well, here's the thing: it's like I was like, I thought like in the beginning it was like more grounded in reality, and then yeah, this person. Flew. Well, that's that's exactly why I love it. That's yeah. exactly why but, I love it. Okay, I but like it was just goofy to me. Like it just it was not like I don't I wasn't like I, was I, like, get, that. I get that. Why the fuck is she flying? Like yeah. she's turning the Peter Pan all of a sudden. Yeah. But I like it. Now, after kind of doing some research of like how this is actually connected to Chinese um, history and what the the uh, martial arts that these characters were studying, I can't remember what it's called. Jin, how Wud- it's, called it's called Wudan. Wudan, yeah, yeah. So it's connected to that. And I was like, okay, I'm just gonna do it. This is part of you know like this Chinese you know fantasy of this, right? Yeah. And uh, so I, I enjoyed it for that. Like as I was continuing to watch it, so I lo- the action of the movie is fucking great. And to me, I just think the story just did not grab me like very much. Mm. Like I just didn't really. Maybe it was just because I've seen you know there's things like this, you know. Um, but I don't know. I I I think like maybe I was just in like a bad mood or just didn't. Yeah want to see it because it was just it's just i didn't really like like care about the main story of it yeah and i don't know if that's just me because this is like probably is, <laughs> this is like an did you did movie. you did, did you watch it in dubs or subtitles i watched it in subtitles okay yeah yeah, yeah i watched it in subtitles but dubbing hell no <laughs> um i don't know who does that but um yeah, so I don't know. I just, I think, and I also very much could not have even gotten it. Like, honest to God. Yeah. It was well, like, I like, was like, kind of confused of like who a lot of the characters were like, a lot yeah. of the time. And I was also like, like, the character relationship. Like, I, the second half of this movie, I really, I liked a lot, like, more than the second half. Yeah, I kind of got 
what the story was when the romance kind of kicked in. I'm like, okay, it's like, okay, I'm kind of, I'm kind of understanding this now. But I'm still even hazy on the character, like, relationship with one another. Okay, yeah. So everything that you're saying is making so much sense to me. And I think that, like, there's a lot. I think I can go either way thinking that it's like I would, I could either say, uh, you're stupid. You should watch it again, and then you'll get it, which yeah. may very well be true. Yeah, but I also, will be true. but I also think, <laughs> and I would like, I would like to believe that's the case because I, I love this movie so much. I want you to like it. Um, yeah. But the other thing about this is that this movie is basically a live action anime, which is one of the yeah. reasons why I love it so yeah, much. Right. Is because yeah. it's like the most effective live action anime I've sure. ever seen. Yeah. And right. I had fucking adore anime. And there's a lot yeah, of things right. that's like cheesy and weird and overcomplicated about it. And I love right. that about those genres. Uh, the other thing about this film that I think is part of what your confusion of towards it is that I think this film is kind of like if Lord of the Rings was combined into one movie, all three yeah. Lord of the Rings was combined into move one movie. Sure. Cause this movie has like a lot of space where it will let characters develop, but things are happening fucking fast. And there's a yeah, lot of right. cuts where it's just like, we transferred a lot of information. If you didn't read and yeah, get who you're right. talking about, you missed a shit ton of information. And then like, also like, I think I also maybe like, either like check out some kind of was just like, it felt exposition as fuck. Like it was like, here's this, here's what we're doing. And then it was just like, maybe I was just kind of even bored of like the way the movie was kind of going because it felt like even the pace of this and like the structure of it felt, I could just telegraph almost everything. Like I was like, oh, yeah, like I, I kind of like just saw like a pattern of the way that like the, the movie was kind of going that like I kind of was just kind of frustrated by. Like it would be like an action confrontation and then... They would just have like conversations with like each other about yeah like, you know, the subplot about what just happened. <laughs> and then it was like when it was just kept doing that and doing that for like the first half. And then the second half of it was when it like the plot kind of thickened for me. When we started really following the character names, I'm gonna get like fucked up. It's fine. Um, yeah, they're they're I'm not even really the, that clear the, on the, it. The woman who stole the sword, you know. Sure. Yeah. You start really following her. I think her um, name is Jen. I think it is Jen. Yeah, Jen. Yeah. Yeah. And when we start following her, that's when I kind of got really like I was re- she was the only character, honestly, that I was like really invested in. And I think like she, I mean she's one of she's probably one of the main characters of the movie. Um but um I don't know. I I feel like I just probably need to watch this again because yeah. I just I just didn't really. I and I also like I don't know. I just wasn't really like invested in it really that much visually either. Like the Whoa, action, Really? Are you yeah, really? Like what? Well, the movie's, the movie's beautiful. The movie's beautiful. Yeah. But it was just like I I just I was probably because I've been like watching a lot of like realist things. Sure. Like, in terms of like recently where like I've watched a lot of documentaries recently and like movies that like take this approach of like realism. Sure, and, like, yeah. This movie is fucking not, not that. that at all. And not so that at all. I think yeah. that those types of movies kind of right now are like annoying to watch because like i don't know for me probably because you're in that be, because you're in that realist that mood. mood where i'm like like because this movie is very much like act like i'm acting i'm acting now I'm acting, oh acting. dude yeah yeah sure so, like i I easily could just not have been in the mood for this um dude i really appreciate all of that that context that you're giving to like what how you're feeling and stuff because uh, that really that would really explain a lot and it's like you know what i'm not going to dismiss your opinion of this movie to say that Dude, like you just didn't get it caught it movie yeah i'm fucking wrong <laughs> no bro. well like look 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 <laughs> this movie, i'm not saying that this movie's bad at all no that's not, not i'm that's um, not that's not I, I don't hear you saying that at all what i'm hearing you say is that you weren't into it when you watched it and that yeah. really intrigues me i'm yeah. really intrigued by that and i think that I think that that's a totally valid experience. Like nothing that I'm going to say is going to make it so that's going to change that experience I, of you no, being I, intrigued. I also by just it. think like 
the story just didn't like I just didn't really grab me. Like I just wasn't really invested in the story. Like I didn't yeah. really have what the emotional kind of core of it really was. Like, so okay, yeah. So this is a really I'm trying to think about the best way to sort of delve into this. And because like I think I'm really curious. I think that you should give this like a couple of years and then rewatch it. Like I think yeah, you should probably. be that yeah. I think that you should be that like wait that long to see yeah. and just try rewatching it again or rewatch it with me and I'll just like point out and be excited at the points and you'll be like, okay, I kind of get it yeah, now right. or something like that. But um like the thing okay, there's there's a lot of reasons why I love this film. Because um, because I'm working on a comic right now and I'm a, such a huge fan of anime and stuff, this right. is exactly the kind of movie that I just really like, you know? Yeah. And I really like sort of this, this blending of like the real romance, gritty stuff and yeah. then sort of switching like randomly to this right. flying action scenes. I just like right. that freedom in a movie. That was one of yeah. the things that I, I just love how free this movie feels yeah, and i right. also i also love how the story is really slow but the movie moves so fast and yeah, i love yeah, sure, yeah. i i, I yeah. love that about it and to and i love how how they're how they move between the character perspectives where you start yeah. and follow which can be really frustrating um yeah, i, I, like I think but yeah, yeah. So I, that's one of the things i love which was like because you start with like the main yeah. Uh, fighter and then he talks to a woman and then you follow the woman and then you talk she talks yeah, to someone else right. and then you follow the girl and mm-hmm. then you jump to her backstory and it's like and that spends like yeah. 30 minutes with her backstory it's like dude this structure is so crazy this should be fucking trash but it works so beautifully yeah. and it flows right. so well yeah. and um so i i think so i think the thing to me is that if you if you want if you're not into this movie uh, and this is talking to you specifically and other people <laughs> as well. Uh, but like, if you're not into this movie and you're interested in trying to understand why other people are, I would say the th- first thing that you should do is understand why the visuals like work so well, yeah. you know, to like to us and then like delve into the story because I genuinely love the story of this film. Yeah, right. It is cheesy. It's super anime, yeah, but right. that's like the style of it. It's, it's yeah, he, right. like Ang Lee yeah. was on, on articles was talking about like, think of this like a fucking musical. It's a musical yeah, where the, right. the fight scenes are break right. from reality. Yeah, right. All the rules yeah. of realism are thrown out the window and it's right. like, we're just fighting. We'll go yeah, all right. over the place. It, it rules don't matter anymore. Right. And then we're back to the real world. Right. That's, and I think that's a really wonderful yeah. thing about this film because the other thing about because this this film is like a martial arts film, but it's like an experimental ground pushing art like art film, okay. which is why I think you had such like a, a I'll weird say, reaction. You know, to what it. my weird reaction to is that that's probably me, but you know, this movie like I I just start thinking about like samurai movies, you know, yeah, like that's just kind of where like head goes, like my head just did not go to anime. You know, like at all. Sure. And that's basically what this is. Is you're absolutely right. I didn't even really think about that as I was watching it. Cause I don't. I haven't seen enough anime to even like yeah. really comment on anime. To be honest. Right. Sure, um, sure. And so I like I didn't even get that at all. So I started thinking about like Kurosawa. No, dude. Like, kind of like comparing. I've seen a lot of Kurosawa movies, and I like. I mean, if you ever see a Kurosawa movie, I mean. You'll, you'll know but i mean they're shockingly beautiful in the way that like i guess i was just kind of like thinking that like this is almost like a less like i don't know deep kurosawa movie yeah like, that, I that's get, fair, and, I, like, think it's fair. But, like, I don't think there's nothing wrong with that like and i, I, and I had a down my line that this was extremely successful in america and yeah. it's not that the plot it's hard to follow. It's almost like it's just very like kind of basic, like kind of like I don't know. Cause I, 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 it's a story that I feel like I've seen before. Maybe yeah. I haven't. I just feel like I have somewhere. Yeah. Um, no. I mean, I but I, like a Kurosawa movie. Like is so much like methodical and like the characters like um like experience in the in this movie or it, it's much more like a character 
he's way more driven with like atmosphere and like really pulling you into these environments and yes. stuff. Which is not what this is. Like this is very much like kind of you know, like you said, fast paced kind of well I, so that's I, probably I, I, well, like, well, well, another reason. <laughs> I think I think one of the reasons why this works so well is because of the atmosphere of this movie too. Mm-hmm. Is because you that's why they can get oh, yeah. away with so yeah. much with so much of the exposition dumps that they do, which they yeah. do do a lot of exposition dumps. I think that's a I think that's a worthy criticism of it. I didn't mind it because I was so invested in what the exposition dumps were kind of like about, you know. Yeah, right. Um, and I'm just adjusted to sort of that goofy style of of <laughs> sure. of, of writing too, yeah, yeah, yeah. because th- sure. that's that that's a huge thing about myself. It's just like I think I think that's also my bias. I should make really clear is that I am really wired to like shit like this this is just sure, yeah, really yeah. in yeah, line with my that. preferences exactly you're yeah. I, you don't like anime don't see, like at all i don't even, like, <laughs> like, watch, like i don't even know any um i don't see a lot of martial arts movies yeah like at all so, yeah i, I think for foul movies but they're I, not even i, I would not. really want i would really wonder about um I, I love situations like this because I really I really like deconstructing like whether because being a classic and being like influential doesn't necessarily mean it's good. You know what I mean? A lot oh, of dude, things no, are hits. I, bro, I mean there is uh this movie is obviously good. I just I think it just did not click with me in terms yeah. of like like I just this, this happens, you know, like you'll see, like, not everything is this is a prime example, not everything is for everybody, yeah, you know, like this movie isn't really my thing, like, okay, I just don't really like it, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Here's here's a, compl- here's a complicated classic. question, here's a complicated question that might deviate. We'll, we'll get back to Crouching Tiger eventually, maybe, maybe it will just be when we wrap uh-huh. this up, but here's a question that. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to give this question justice, but it's how, so if you have a film, how do you determine if a film is like bad, right? Because I all like personal no, 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 like a larger, more philosophical scale, because okay. like you, it's easy to answer like how you determine that, right? Yeah. Cause you have your reasons for everyone kind of has their reasons, but how do we as a human race determine how, if something is bad, you know, because we only, yeah. we only have our perspective, right? So like in this situation, <laughs> I would say it's fair to say, because you didn't like it, it would be fair for you to call it bad. But you sure. are reluctant to call it bad because of the social, oh. like, like yeah. the social situation of this film. Well, and then because the- I'm also like, <clears throat> this isn't like a situation where I would like to give this another chance. Like, like I, yeah, like, that's I a big part. Said, I don't like hate watching this. I think I was also really impressed. Like, oh, this is going to be an iconic movie. You know, I sat, I was yeah. expecting something. Going to get that. This is why we say watch movies multiple times. If I watch this yeah. again and, I, and I'm still like, it's not really for me. Yeah. Then it's not for me. You know, this is like a situation where. Were you sober, by the way? Were you sober? Oh, yeah. So cold, sober. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't <laughs> high or anything. Yeah. I was so cold, sober. Um, a broad daylight. Um, <laughs> so, uh, so no, so that is a very interesting <laughs> question. I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. That if like how, how how does a society determine if something is bad? Yeah. And I think my answer to that is is time. I think like that's great. When something comes out, and also like let's be honest here, it's it's it is obvious that something makes an impact. It's obvious, like in this day and age with the internet, and you can see what people are talking about. It's all about what people are talking about. For like Get Out, for example. Yeah. Still a fucking classic. When that movie came out, it was like huge. Everybody was talking about it. Years later, people still talk about it. Years later, people still, like, it's still to this day, college courses are being taken about it. 
there's obviously something going on there. With bad movies, <laughs> with like historically, a lot of bad movies you wouldn't even fucking know about them. Yeah. You don't. You yeah. think about how yeah, many, yeah. think about how many movies come out a year, and think about our cop. Like I remember, I had thirty films in my in my top nineteen or whatever. Like honor mentions and everything. You know how many fucking movies come out a year, man? Yeah. You don't fucking know. But yeah. They, they were bad. They fucking woo, they fucking faded away. And no one even talk about okay. it anymore. Here's another and then interesting that's the thing. thing about unrated gems, right? When gems, yes. When, okay, that's all we're talking about. When the gems can come out, like a Napoleon Dynamite or a or a Donnie yeah. Darko. Yeah. These movies that were lost in the maybe the giant blockbuster that they were released under, they get thrown away, and those are amazing to find. They're gems. They're like, holy shit, this is like a movie that we thought was bad, but we rediscovered it, and now it's this fucking classic. Donnie Darko is a classic. Is yeah. A fucking, it's a, people, there are books there are articles about articles. <laughs> there, are fans, there are fucking people discussing that movie to this day, and it is twenty years old. That's crazy. So, yeah. For me, the question, the answer has always been: I've thought about that all the time. Where it's like, who am I to say that this is bad? And like, in, in reality, people say it is bad. The majority of people will say it's bad. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, like it's like. I think most people would be like, or, uh, you were pretty bad. Uh, did it make the, the money that it nearly should have gotten if it was good? And then people shit on that movie every fucking chance. Like, I, I've never met somebody that liked that movie. <laughs> like, yeah. The consensus around the internet is people hate it. Yeah, there's just, you know, there's an audience that like it, but there's always going to be that, you know? But I the think. Majority, yeah. People, you will know over time. When something comes out, also a bad movie can be so bad that it actually does make an impact. Like, yeah. The Last Airbender. It is so bad that it's, like, considered to be one of the worst movies of the or, decade. Or if you want to make it even more complicated, talking about The Room, which is so bad, it's it's, it's, right, it's genuinely good. kind of and brilliant. That's like, and that's, yeah, right. And that's, like, a whole other thing where it's, like, that's another amazing thing about unrated gems. Like yeah. These people are like, whoa, there's something going on here. Who knows? Like 30 years from now, maybe like um, Aquaman will be like this sure. fucking yeah. movie. Yeah, we don't know. People, like our grandkids will watch and be like, look at this fucking relic when they were fucking making superhero movies all the time. These fucking goofy fucking superhero movies. Like, yeah. Yeah. Know. I think I think that's that's great, man. I think that's super true because then, our grandkids will tell us like Aquaman sucks, and then we'll be like, <laughs> we like we kind of like it when it we kind of like it. Come yeah, on, like, well, yeah. Things change. People change. I think changes. I think time is the most powerful factor of determining these things, and I think I'm I'm going to look into this a little bit more mic- microscopically to talk about like what is happening during those times and what you can do. Well, let's just think. Okay, so I, I think that I think that one of the things, the important factor is like what what when you're talking about like when society is deciding what is good and what's bad. What that huh. really is is when individuals are making authentic choices for what moves them and what doesn't. Right? We have yeah. We I have, think people people are doing that. Yeah, you know, but, you know. but and I think and I think the way that you as an individual can help to make those decisions, to help to working towards understanding, towards towards time deciding what is good and what is bad, is just you deciding authentically in that moment. Like I don't like this or I do like this because you deciding that is making a huge impact on what yeah. is going to be relevant in the generations moving forward you deciding i like this i don't right. doesn't matter who the fuck you are yeah. you existing and liking something or not liking something is making a huge impact and the other yeah. thing that's important to that is you as an individual are responsible to let your opinions be malle- malleable too you know like for example um a lot like this movie or for you like maybe you'll like it in the future you have to accept that 
you yeah. know, that maybe I'll like mm -hmm. this in the future, or maybe you won't. And you'll have to accept that you're never going to like this film when everyone else does. Right. That's kind of a hardship to have to live through that. When right. everyone talks about Crashing Tiger, Hidden Dragon, you're just going to either have to decide, it's like, well, I'll either have to just not talk during this conversation. Yeah, everybody, everybody, <laughs> has, everybody has movies, right? Whatever, absolutely. Like, oh, yeah, fuck. absolutely. You know, like, everyone's like, oh, fuck, I love that movie. And then I remember one, one of my friends made him laugh so hard because we were part of that fight club. Yeah, and he was like, <laughs> and we were all like, there were like five of us. We were all like, oh man, it was fucking awesome. And you know, we were in high school, we just saw it, you know. Yeah, yeah, uh, it was awesome. And we were a high schooler, and so uh, and my buddy was like, I don't like Fight Club, and we basically just like made fun of him and riffed on him for not yeah. liking Fight. How do you fucking? But, you know, there's, there's shit like that. There's That happens, you know? Yeah. People have those movies that you watch, and they just don't click with you. Like, I totally understand all what you're saying. It's like, but you describing this movie is like, okay, that's why I don't like it. You know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah, I, sure. yeah. not anime, fucking goofy shit, not really into most of the time, sometimes, right now. You know, I don't know. You know? Yeah. So... I don't know, man. I, I would like to like this movie, you know? So <laughs> I want to. But, but dude, we need to talk about, okay, the action of this movie is fucking cool as fuck. Like, like oh it's, it's kind God. of, it's kind of like what this movie is Oh, my God. For, you know? Um, I love the action so The much. end, the last action scene between um, the the older woman and the and Jen. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that shit is wild. That's like, that's the best one. That one's insane. Yeah. And then there's like, yeah, they're all great. But, um, I, yeah, the yeah, action's I, really cool. I, I love, I love the, I, I the, the action scenes in, uh, I just love, I love everything about this movie. Well, I love everything about I this I think also, movie. like, the action too is like, it's super choreographed and like really, fun but there's but like there are it, it is it's so it's a weird tone and what like you said anime makes total sense to me now because i really was just like not fucking with because it was like this goofy as like just awesomely goofy action where it's like people are kicking each other like fucking like 50 feet old, far away and cl yeah climbing yeah, up yeah. walls literally flying like just looping and literally like flying um yeah. so that's goofy and then like but it's like shot in a way that's like kind of like like grounded in reality so it was like kind of like okay i don't really so, okay okay okay, okay, now, okay you say that there's total sense so so the other thing this movie reminds me of is oh fuck what is the movie with the axe gang in it the chinese another chinese movie with the axe oh, gang in uh, it oh uh, kung, fu hustle. kung fu hustle yeah, this movie reminds like me kung a lot hustle. which kung fu hustle it makes That's sense why you would like comedy, that though. exactly because yeah, it's right. really set in its yeah. tone and the reality of how exaggerated it is is totally permissible for all because it's yeah, constant right. in that yeah yeah. But this why this is why I love this movie because yeah, it's sure. not constant yeah. like that. It breaks out of those boundaries and it yeah. allows itself to be that hysterical. You're totally right. It's it's like it's almost parody how ridiculous yeah. some of these fight scenes are. Well, like I admire about it, but I think my my conception my con my, my perception when I saw this movie is that I thought it was gonna be like a hardcore sure like a sure. fucking kung fu movie, but it it's kind of it's kind of like exaggerated that like a little bit, right? Yeah, what yeah, and I, saying? and I think I think that I think that it's it, you might have gone in expecting a movie like Old Boy or one of those I, kind of probably, films. you know? Yeah, yeah. and it's and yeah. it's like this film to me is a similar quality of film to something like Old Boy. I'm not exaggerating that at all. It's like very yeah. similar quality and sure. how much I love it and how well this was made. Yeah. But it's so different, yeah. <laughs> obviously. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah. so yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah. I I think that I think that um that that would have like a major impact on it because yeah, you know, like maybe... if I watch it again, I like to see like more 
a custom to like the vibe of this so I was expecting it to be like way way like grittier or like yeah. way like like I don't know or like, I don't know okay so here's here's another thing that I'm like I'm I've been thinking about which is like this is not an attack on you and you know this but let me just like make this clear like oh my god but yeah. like one of one of the things I have realized for myself is is recognizing that how closed off i am from different things you know and that once i just like open myself up to that different thing and just like not have any opinions on it and just let it be the the thing like open-minded it becomes like one of my favorite things like uh like liking a new genre of music this happens to me all the time we're like r&b is a great example I always thought I hated R and B, like I didn't like it at all. And then yeah, I, I've opened I my mind to it. That a lot of people that are like young do, where it's like I don't absolutely. like R and B. Like, yeah. well, you don't know absolutely. Listen to fucking D'Angelo and tell me you don't like that. Yeah. You know? and if you don't, I think you have a problem. Yeah. <laughs> or Prince. Um, you know, so I think that's something that a lot. And like I wasn't, and I'm absolutely open to. It liking something like this you know obviously you know i don't i don't go in like wanting to hate something i think those people are kind of no losers. i don't no no um, no i don't think you're doing losers that in my book. um but um i think this yeah. is dramatically outside of anything that and you're i also used to don't enjoying. like not like like i think this like i like it like it's, i just wasn't like blown away by it like, like i wasn't and I think I, part of it is I saw this, this classic movie 20 years later or whatever, and, like, I had this, like, expectation of, like, maybe I, what I think it's going to be or what I want it to be because I've just heard about this movie for so long. Absolutely. And when I finally watch it, my expectations are let down, you know? Yeah. That's probably what happened. So I should give this another shot because I want – I'm, I'm, I am fascinated with albums in this movie, like, for yeah. sure. I it's mean, like, good, like I wasn't sitting there like enjoying it, and that's that's just me. This is all me. This is not yeah. the fucking movie, man. This is all me. Yeah, and I, I also, me. I also really, I really, I have been in your fucking position before, man. So I yeah, really when, you want to like things that other people like. You yeah, wanna like like classic movies that other people like. And like I like this movie, but I'm just like not like like in love with it. So. But the other, but the other thing, the other thing too that I think that I don't is like important. Shakespeare in love. Sure, I, yeah. quite honestly, <laughs> I hate it. There are people <laughs> out there that fucking love it. I think I think that sometimes there's like there's a thing there's a thing the other thing that i think is important to address that i feel a lot of times is that when there's a situation like this or i don't like a movie where it feels like i should the problem is not that the person who doesn't like this movie is the problem like that to me is a toxic mindset to have like you are the problem here because you don't like this movie so we should fix that it's like that's another thing you do when you're really young that's so fucking stupid. Because because the reason why you do that change your life. Like you can talk about it, maybe they could be like Okay, maybe I'll give it another shot. But yeah. like most of the time, you know. You feel something, you feel something. Well, you know? because because what we're trying to do when you're young, and I feel this a lot too, you know, and this is this is what my struggle is right now with talking to you about this. I'm not overreacting yeah. to this because I've been through this before. I'm more <laughs> mature. I'm not gonna react to you like a yeah. child because I know what's happening here. I've been through this. But the threat that is happening to me right now is that my reality is being threatened. You know, it'd be really <laughs> comfortable. <laughs> yeah, because it'd be really comfortable for me Ooh. if you just said you like this film. I could just say this is a classic. We yeah. know what a good movie is. Yeah, but you're it's... threatening me by saying you don't like it. <laughs> Literally, you are. Hey, you <laughs> you're fucking wrong. You're threatening my opinion, my viewpoint of you're the fucking world. Wrong, dude. <laughs> <Holy sucks. laughs> And I think I um, think it's a yeah, I think it's a huge funny. problem no, because I, I think I don't think people know how to yeah, process like, that. <laughs> yeah, no, I just been watching movies for so long that I think like I I know what that feels like, and I don't like. I'm always going to movies. I had it always with like. It always feels really weird when you like love something and everybody else like hates it. 
Yeah. You know, I remember a gigging experience where I went and saw the Revenant, which is like one of my favorite movies, probably. Uh, and um, when I saw that when it came out in theaters, I went with like six of my friends, and I was like, you know, <sighs> I was like, holy shit! Like that movie was fucking incredible, and everyone hated it. Yeah. I was the only person that liked it. Wow. And so I felt so like that's a weirder feeling because it's like you feel like if you're wrong, you feel like you're like, what? Like, am I weird? And then you kind of realize, oh, no, it's just, you know, a lot of people like this movie, you know? And, yeah. Well, like, that's a that's a great example, too, because it it's goes... It's nice it... to know that, there, like, there's two kinds of people. Sometimes people, like, there's the other side where, like, people... I know when, I've been following Rock Hampton since they fucking started. And I remember seeing the fans basically being like, um, like when they got popular, like when they signed like record a record deal and like they released like Saturation Three or whatever, like the more they got popular, like you were seeing fans be like, Oh, I miss when no one knew who they were. Absolutely. And there's there's a couple kinds of people where it's like I like that aspect where it feels like that it's yours, you know, you feel like that you this is something that I discovered and something that is only for me and that everybody else can enjoy. But there's also like a person that I think I am where it's more like you know, I want kind of everything to like I want everything to like things that I think are good, you know. And sure. Like, that I like, you know, I like to have that communal thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think that's, that a, that, oh, that's really a interesting. Feeling, a feeling that I have where it's like, it's like, man, yeah, like I like this thing, or I was more comfortable like hating things <laughs> that other people like. I was like, that's just part of my probably my hipster uh, brain. No, I, I feel was, that. Like, I feel that way too. Because <laughs> like. It's, it's, it was it was easier for me to hate it. I was like, okay, I know. This. My favorite thing, like my my favorite thing is to hate what someone loves, but like what they hate. That's my favorite position to be in. <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah. <laughs> because you feel so powerful when that position. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. It's weird, but also like sometimes you feel like I I don't really have that. Sometimes it feels like. Sometimes I think I'm like, am I the fucking weird person for really liking Death Grips? You know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fucking, am I the weirdo who just really likes Death Grips? <laughs> or just really likes Brock Hampton, you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, so, but no, I mean, it's, it's all, it's, we're just, we're just discussing a thing called audiences that, yeah. you know, people, when you're an exec, you talk about these are the types of audiences that you look at when you're making a movie to fit a certain demographic. You know? I want, yeah, <laughs> just just imagine everything as a giant fucking graph, right? So you have this yeah. graph, you have an x axis and a y axis, <laughs> and then you have some jerk, right, who plots all these individual points. He plots plot, he plots two, and then he plots a million fucking points. And from this point, he designs like three correlations from it you know yeah. three lines that come out of this graph here's what you have to remember you're one fucking point on that graph you're yeah, a boy. one of those one things point. you make yeah. up one of those points and maybe yeah. you're one of those guys on that line and maybe you're all the way on fucking like the south end corner of it you know like exactly. what are you doing over there you exactly. dumbass get on get on the what point get on doing? the correlation what, what are, are you doing, doing? You're you dumbass. <laughs> but guess what? Even though you're a fucking dumbass on the wrong side of this stupid fucking graph designed by this jerkwad, you're still on the goddamn graph, dude. You're still up there. Still on the goddamn graph. <laughs> yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, I think that was a really good discussion on why. Yeah, I love that discussion. How I I apologize that I wish we were talking about the movie more, but like it's okay. I'm this is the conversation. Hard this time. Is even that's recollecting the story of this really that's okay. was. Yeah, that's okay. Probably because I'm a moron. <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> movie has five Academy Awards. No, nah, it's because you Tons weren't into like it, it, dude. It didn't work for you, dude. I love why would you it. why would you why would you be invested in something that you didn't care about? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, exactly. At all. Yeah. I like that. I can yeah. recollect the whole fucking thing, but that's because I loved it. 
Why would you spend your time with that? Why would you put, commit that to memory when you didn't enjoy it? Right. Um, we, could, we, we have other things in common that we could enjoy. Yeah. You know? yeah. Not- I like anime. I'll be weird. I'll watch my hentai. You don't have to talk to me about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah, so I feel bad, but I think we ended up having a good conversation. I 100% I don't remember absolutely what agree. The fu- I don't know how long we've been talking. I don't yeah. know how long we've been talk. I don't know what's going on. I think we've talked long enough for a podcast if we want to wrap this up here. Dude, Do you I have think... anything you have anything funny? I actually have something funny to say. Anything funny to say? No. I have so you think of so I'll tell my funny thing and then okay. you can say think of something funny real quick to say. It could be anything. But okay. here's a little here's a story. So Eva and I, uh, there's the, the, there's this spot that right when we come into our apartment, these people, people will leave shit. That's like free shit. We've assumed that that's what this means. It's possible Eva and I are just stealing people's things like <laughs> while they're moving. But uh, we're, we're like, we're like pretty certain it's like, just like the side of the road okay. kind of dumpster yeah, type stuff. Right. Um, but, uh, I they would ask people if they're stealing shit. Yeah. So, so Eva and I found this mirror, this full body mirror uh-huh. on, on, down in, in this spot. Yeah. And Eva has wanted a full body mirror forever, you know, uh-huh. because so that she can see her whole body, like to get outfits on. I also right. like full body mirrors. This isn't just Eva. I yeah. was very excited about this too. So we brought this into our apartment and we have uh-huh. this full body mirror and we sat down in the apartment and I didn't think anything else about it. And then a little while, Eva, a little while later, just today, we've had this thing for uh, like two weeks. And yeah. Eva was telling me, it's just like, you know what? This mirror is in the view of my camera when on Zoom. And oh. it also happens to be right in front of our closet where our clothes are. And sometimes oh. you come in and change your clothes. And I have realized that I can see you in the mirror when you come in to change your clothes. So what this probably means is that I have been exposing myself to Eva's classes for the past two weeks, (laughs) unwitting to myself or Eva. Oh, shit, dude. And now Eva Eva thinks that she caught it before anyone notices, and she was like, kind of whenever I would come in, she would lean over and cover the mirror. Oh. So she thinks this, <laughs> but I'm I'm like pretty confident that I have like flashed a little bit of skin to like some of her <laughs> students or some of her classmates before. You fucking mooned them, dude. I mooned them dude, straight up. <laughs> I don't think I ever showed any dick, but it's not, I'm not 100% about that. That's fucking hilarious. Because what I do is what I do is that I stand in the doorway like like parallel yeah. parallel uh, to where the camera is so yeah. that people I know people can't see me, but that right. happens to be directly in front of the front fucking of the mirror. <laughs> So, uh, s- s- sorry, hope- see you, students. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> I had no idea. Hairy asshole. <laughs> it's really hairy. It's super hairy. It's so hairy. hairy. It's Why sweaty. Is it so hairy. God damn. <laughs> Why is it so hard to say that? Yeah. Talk Why is it hairy in the first plate? Why do we need hair in our hair asshole? Crack? Well, probably guys to do it here it keeps it warm yeah yeah do i really need my asshole to be warm though can you think that we can grow out of that yeah girls don't have hairy assholes they don't no you know, any of their asshole i guess not, not. really no, no. Men just inherently have more hair it probably just grows everywhere but why 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 does it have to why can't it stop like at the chode reason why does it have to go all the way into my hole the chode reason <laughs> Um, you have answers well, for I me? Think because yeah, I do because I think the kid now they don't have clothes. Yeah, they're at home. They, you know, they sit, like, oh, it's cold. And they like evolved hair, you know, to protect the rectum. <laughs> Asshole, get warm. That's what hair is for. <laughs> it's for warmth. It's for protection. Yeah, and we have said it. We don't need it. We don't need this like. <laughs> we don't need full body because we end up to close. Yeah. Uh, probably people, the first people were very hairy. 
Yeah. They evolved into not having hair. But like, they okay. Evolved into just being a skeleton. Okay, okay, wait, wait. So like, why why would it be that the assholes location where it's like ubiquitous, where all men have hairy assholes, but we don't all have hairy chests? Because it would make sense to me if all men had hairy well, chests and only some of us had hairy well, there's assholes. There's some people that... <laughs> No, I don't think... <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying is I don't think... I think we're likely... We likely... An anomaly. I don't know if a lot of people serious? have hairy assholes. Yeah, dude, I would be so jealous of a like man who said he asshole, doesn't have a hairy my asshole. Is hairy? I mean, yeah, like, mine too. Really, it is like it is like the Sahara. It is like the Sahara. <laughs> it is like the Amazon. Yeah, um, mine's like is, Cthulhu's beard. Cthulhu. That's what mine looks like. <laughs> <laughs> oh it, it, it feels like that when you look into it. it looks like you're looking into Cthulhu's <laughs> eyes you question reality itself what am I doing with my life <laughs> when I stare into my asshole I see the future <laughs> that um, dude that should be a subplot of bottle cap dude hairiest asshole ever in bottle I cap can see through the fucking... oh my god Ooh, oh, we got now. we got a visual theme too because yeah, an the, asshole kind of looks like a bottle cap. The hole. Oh my god! Like like there uncut gems. That went, yeah, what a no. He went, wait, yeah, the good girl, yeah, the good girl through the hole. Look at it. Yeah, into the butt. Oh, well, it came out of the butt. I think I don't know if it went into the butt. Coming out of the butt feels a little bit less. Dude, I heard about there's this movie cherry. We gotta end this, but yeah. there's this movie Cherry with Tom Holland. You heard about this new movie? I think so. The Apple TV Plus movie. Haven't seen it, <laughs> but I heard about there's a scene where someone gets a rectal exam and the camera is in the butt and like you see the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I heard about it. I was like, what the fuck? That's the best thing I've ever heard. That. Oh, man. oh, what? Wait, I have one more movie I actually want to mention, and then we can close this. Oh, up. yeah, I could, because, I could look for a movie too. Because th- I saw a trailer for a new A24 movie called Zola. Have you seen yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the coolest thing to me. Yeah, I know. Because yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm sure that you're aware with this thread, yeah. but I was one of those people way back, like, I get it must have been in fucking high school. Yeah. I saw this Twitter thread of what the Zola thing came on. Uh-huh. And I read this and I was like, that was the craziest shit I've ever read. And I yeah. have it on my fucking oh, notes whoa, on my phone really? from however oh, long shit. it was. And I was like, I'm gonna make this. <laughs> no, wait, really? Yeah, dude. I yeah. kept this and I was like, I'm gonna make this. And I saw That's this trailer crazy. and I was like. Is this my movie? Did they steal my no movie? Way. Yeah. Dude, I so felt like that when I saw um, Baby Driver. Yeah. Like when I saw Baby Driver, I was like, dude, I totally had an idea when I was in, like in high school. Yeah, like, I remember I you telling me about that. And, like, I totally had that idea. Yeah, that's so funny. So I'm I am so hyped because I would never want to make that film now. I have no interest in making that film as it looks I, I'm great. Not sure. Like, but it looks will... it looks awesome. Yeah, it looks, looks so great. good. My sister I'm saw so it. excited. My sister saw it. She saw it? Yeah. Wow. At Sundance. That's, that, this was another movie that that's so awesome. premiered at Sundance two years ago. Did she like uh, it? Yeah, she loved it. Loved it. Okay, she thought cool. it was great. Yeah, so yeah, I think that movie looks awesome. I wonder how what if the if they're gonna funny. follow the Twitter thread, how how closely they're gonna I follow. I think that. my sister said that it's pretty close, like it's yeah. pretty because it's so absurd. Yeah. That to, why it doesn't they, really why, need much yeah, editing. Why, the, yeah, why you know they you know uh honestly take out. Honestly, I think the only way that they would edit it would be to like uh make it cleaner if yeah, anything. Yeah, exactly. because or the twitter thread line. is so extreme and all over the place that they would just have to streamline it that was so i, I was just so i just thought that was such yeah, a cool really thing awesome. yeah. that was such a cool thing for me to see this twitter thread i've never been that intimately involved with yeah, like something so online weird. yeah um I so that was that was a that first way, for too. me which is why that movie is going to be successful and why it was a good fucking idea to make that movie. Yeah. I saw that 
And for whatever, and it's cool because like now when I see that next time, now I'll know it's like they're gonna make a movie out of this. Like I know what it's gonna <laughs> yeah, what, what they're gonna yeah. do. But when yeah. I saw that the first time, it's like, well, this would have made a great movie, but I don't know if they'll ever do it. So yeah. I should do it, which was, was my <laughs> thought process. But I'm really glad that they did it. I'm so hyped. Yeah, it's so cool. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that little, what was that called out? Summer? Uh yeah, I didn't I don't know. I, I didn't want to do it when it comes out. I would love to. But, I would love uh, to be so super cool. So I saw a couple movies. One, the Oscar nominations came out, which was a while ago. But I we didn't like mention it or anything. All mm-hmm. I'm gonna say is like I'm honestly pretty happy with them. Sound of Metal got tons of nominations. Cool. I love that movie. It's a great movie. That was and it's good. a small indie movie that probably never would have gotten the Oscar nominations if it didn't come out in 2020. Absolutely. That's pretty fucking cool. And no bad lands in the amazing movie. So I'll be like catching up on kind of the Oscar nominations. There's a lot like, of like, there's a whole playlist on Netflix. I was really surprised to yeah. see that. Of Oscar and I saw a movie called The Father, which I've not heard of it. Uh, it stars Anthony Hopkins and Olivia okay. Coleman. Okay. And it is about um, the father is going through dementia, uh, hardcore oh. dementia. And what this oh, movie is about the family dealing with the character, Anthony Hopkins' character. And what what it sounds like is a, you know, a Oscar bait, you know, tearjerker or whatever, right? I yeah. loved the, this movie. I, I loved it. I thought it was fucking amazing because what's cool about it is the film is told from the perspective of Anthony Hopkins. Mm. So what you get is, oh, is your perspective. Movie, Ooh. Where it feels like you're on the, you have dementia. That's cool. And it's cool, but bring your fuck. This movie is so fucking sad. I mean, uh-huh. it is heavy. It is emotional. Anthony Hopkins. I don't know who this guy is, but he's a great, he's a great actor. Who should continue to act? Yeah, this I'm, Anthony Hopkins guy. Yeah, yeah. Start he, just starting to out his career. Good. I'm um, glad he's glad he's jumping glad in he, there real yeah, strong. I'm glad. Um, so he's fucking phenomenal in it. So saw that. Love that. And then I know you'll never watch this one. Just want to mention it because it just came out. <laughs> uh, the new Eric Andre uh, movie called Bad Trip. Never in the my trip, whole entire trip life. Movie. Uh, it's. <laughs> Honestly, it's one of it was very. I was immensely impressed by this movie. I thought it I'm was sure. I'm sure funny. it's so innovative, right? It was innovative. It was. Um, they've done things like this, obviously, like fucking Borat, uh, Sasha Baron Cohen's, you know, movies, Jackass. But what made this so amazing that kind of stood it out from maybe the Jackass movies. Bad Trip is like. What they do, what Eric Andre does, is incorporates the pranks within the plot of the movie in a way that Borat does, but in a more like elaborate way that is okay. very funny. Um, like who Eric Andre will he wrote these pranks to have a person say a certain word or a certain like sentence to propel the plot along. The plot is this self-aware goofy ass road trip movie and it is totally like they don't take itself seriously wow. at all you know it's 80 minutes it is like it, in and it, out in and out it is hilarious it, the pranks are absolutely ridiculous and hilarious and like wow it's less than an hour and 30 that's less crazy than an hour and 30. it's fucking 82 minutes or something and the fucking and that's I can't tell you how perfect that fucking time is. You know, if it was longer, it would have overseen its welcome. You know, we're, yeah. we're, you're watching a dude prank a bunch of people for, you know, like the movies prank, plot point, prank. You know, you can only, you can only get, get you so far. So, 82 minutes. 82 minutes, 82 minutes is how far and, I can get you. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are things that made me laugh so fucking hard i mean there's one prank that that is getting like the most like public uh you know cock cock about 
it and the it, the movie stars Little Rel Howery from Get Out as well. Mm-hmm. And uh Tiffany Haddish. Mm. And <laughs> Lil Rel Howery's character and Eric Andre, they do a bunch of drugs. They get like super high. Yeah. And the prank is that they go into this like <laughs> This, like grocery store and just act like they're on acid and they just fucking like look, you know real people, people. <laughs> yeah and so after that they wake up and they're in a field and they're like dude what happened last night and they're like oh, i don't know and they get up and their dicks are attached in a chinese finger trap <laughs> so and both they're real dicks i mean they're wow. real dicks are Touching at the tips, like with the in Chinese, a Chinese finger trick, and they start freaking out, and they're like trying to get help. And this is real, you know. This is real. They, Eric Andre and Laura Hill are walking wow. their dicks out in the Chinese finger trap, and they're, <laughs> they're running down like Chinatown in San Francisco or whatever, and people are like fucking running away, and like wow. no one will help them. They're like screaming for help, and then. It, <laughs> Ultimately, they go and they're like, oh, there's a barbershop. Like, they have scissors, and he, they go to a barbershop, <laughs> and the dude pulls out a knife and starts, like, chasing them. And so I re- and then, like, that's in the movie, and I read that that was, like, the security guard had to, like, who was there, had to tackle the fucking guy. <laughs> he was gonna, like, kill them. <laughs> and I read that, I was like, oh, Wow. Um, that one's that prank is amazing. There's one that is that I'll that you should I'll show you. It's not cringy, it's just, yeah, it's so fucking funny. Um, but yeah, I thought it was great. I'm a big Eric Andre fan. I love his yeah. show. I, lo- I, I, think, I honestly I honestly like Eric Andre a lot. You just know me, I don't have much tolerance for shit I mean, like his, that. His but his he's brilliant. Awkwardness. I mean, he, Abs- yeah, I mean, yeah. He's a brilliant. He's a brilliant comedian, and he's I think genius. in our 21st, in our uh, generation, he's like a new god. You know, he's he's hilarious. I love I, him. I, I honestly so, see that ability to be able to not care. This is what I love about comedians and stuff. All, but I yeah. also like, I love this about comedians. But I also realize I recognize that I, as a person, can't do this. This yeah. is a limitation of myself. But like that they they don't care and they're able to do any anything just for laughs like they just don't yeah, exactly. care at right. all for that yeah, stuff because exactly. it's all about like the events of life it's like if they make someone seriously mad because it's, it's like beautiful this is what i like about i was thinking about this when i saw uh like the bad friends and the two bears like crossover <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and i was thinking about it's yeah. like they it's like it's a great point to realize that when you get offended, how meaningless it is when you get offended. Yeah. You know? Right, so like yeah. making someone feel offended, there's no reason to feel bad about that. And in a right. certain respect, you know, yeah. like you don't want to like lose friends or lose relationships you care about, <laughs> you know, maybe, but maybe you shouldn't really worry about offending people that much. Right. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's a right. great code to live by. I think comedians yeah. are really have a wiseness in that way, but there's a certain degree of it that I don't have much dollars. Yeah, exactly. For. And I, and I think they know that. Like people uh and like I think Eric I, I love <laughs> like that's the one thing that we got I love comedy that makes people uncomfortable. Absolutely, like I don't do yeah. it personally. I love watching it. So yeah. <laughs> Like there's a fucking there's a scene, a bad trip. Oh god! So like he he works in a smoothie shop, and the prank before he stuck his hand into a blender, and the fucking like the blood started spewing out from the yeah. blender, and all these people were like, <laughs> like oh my god! <laughs> and they're like, what? Like, and so after that, he and he decides he's gonna go to New York and visit this girl, and he's yeah. like, and he's like, I gotta tell somebody. And he walks up to a, a real dude, like, on the bench with his hand, yeah. like, completely cut off. And he's, like, he's talking to him. He's, like, hey, can I talk? <laughs> can I tell you something? And he's, like, sure. And Eric Andre <laughs> basically is acting, like, to this real guy. Like, he's doing a performance. And he's, like, listen, man, I just, I really like this girl. And like he's like doing that whole thing to this dude. And this wow. dude is like amazing. He like gives him the advice and he's like, 
looks good if you if you love her. <laughs> like this is all like this is all wow. real. And then, like if you love her, man, just go get her and like something like that. And like Eric Andre's like, you're right. And he starts singing a song. Like he starts breaking out in the musical number. <laughs> He's in like a plaza and he starts freaking out. He starts singing the song and the guy's like, okay. And then he gets up and like he starts like doing the whole thing in this middle of the plaza. Uh huh. And, and this one guy was like, went to the dude on the bench, like, what's this guy doing? And the guy on the bench just goes, he's in love. Like, that's what he said. <laughs> Wow! And we're like, holy! Wow! And then he goes into a mall and like go, just like all these like background dancers come out of nowhere and they just do like a whole musical number inside of this mall. Wow! Uh, so funny. It's it's great because like I was actually really floored by it because it was like like my grandpa. You ever see that the Jackass movie? Unfortunately, oh, yeah, I did. Watch that. Yeah, so my grandpa. It was kind of similar to that, where it was like a road trip movie that like used pranks along. The thing yeah. about bad grandpa is like they try to like make it like poignant, like they try yeah. to like have like actual scenes, and the pranks were just like the grandpa getting in trouble or whatever. Yeah, but this movie like actually was kind of innovative with the prank movie because it was like completely absurd. Like the whole movie was just absurd. Yeah, yeah. And it was written in a way that was, like, that let the pranks, like, actually almost, like, make sense, like, in the absurd context of this movie, but also, like, like had real reactions and real people, like, add to the movie. Like, yeah. there's this great, at the end, like, like, the two best friends, you know, separate or whatever. Like, you know, it's a typical, like, like they got trouble they got they got mad at each other and they separated and then the end they're gonna listen man i'm sorry you know like I, yeah yeah you know, that cliche yeah <laughs> and they do it and they do it but they do it on a real bus so Lil real harry is on the bus like he's, and then eric andre runs up to it and stops it this is all hidden parents stuff stops it like in a fucking rom-com gets on the bus and is like and literally does this whole speech like that whole generic movie speech, like yeah. <laughs> in a bus, and all these people are like watching it, and then when they finally are like, "You want to go to New York with me?" They're like, yeah, and then everyone just like starts like clapping and shit. And, wow! Like, but it's so, it's so funny because it's like, it like like they're doing this like cheesy ass movie, but these people like don't really even know. Like they just started act like it's so funny. I, I yeah. like I, I really it's really cool that way. It's I, I like interesting. I like what these movies are gonna do to filmmaking. Even though I don't like watching these movies, I think that what they are working on with really it's it's this continuous theme of like immersing our reality more and more with television. Yeah. It's kind of scary, but it's a valuable it's valuable, you know, totally. working towards towards like blending I mean, like, this look at two what things. Does. I mean, like, the thing mm-hmm. that's different that like Eric Andre is like, he's just here to make you laugh. Like a fucking goofy ass fucking time. Just fucking but it, it, like that's what he says, but like I think like what he did was he kind of showed like a lot of the people in this movie are like genuinely good people that like he pranked. Like there's like a lot of like Sasha Baron Cohen tries to kind of um you know show something about America, you know, like does these things and kind of there's a there's an agenda there where it's like revealing yeah. how racist the country is or how sexist the country is. And that's what makes him so brilliant. You know, like prank movies are that's why Borat was nominated for an Oscar. You know, it you know, there's not it's a fucking hilarious movie and I well, thought movie. Well, but yeah, there's something really interesting going on. Which you know? I think I think the other thing what the, these movies like this do is connected to in and of itself oh, yeah. what their point is, not in the format of that film specifically. In a way, actually it is because he he does use real people for his performance and real reactions for that. Right. But like I'm more thinking of the theme of it which these films really reveal sort of 
how our identity are performances. So even though yeah. we as humans think that we're individual, it's just like, that's acting and I'm real, right? right. You got to think it's just like, well, maybe yeah. not, you know, you're that's just what kind of like, playing like, a part. Like, yeah, yeah. It's, that's what I love about like hidden prank shit. Cause it's just like, it kind of reveals, like when you're in a situation like that, you see these people like, reacting like a certain way and it almost shows like they're like you don't know it's real <laughs> you yeah. don't know like you know and like the, the so these people that get pranked like have almost like identity crisis yeah like, in front of you well okay really yeah you cool. know which and i think that's a good that's a great thing for these films but i always think about being the person who's being pranked that's what i always empathize with Right. And that's the thing that like the thing in, in and of itself is another great example of like why I think I have such an adverse reaction to those movies, because I think about that and it's just like, I know how I would react and I would react like any other Joe Schmo, right? Yeah, right. Like yeah. how everyone would. I'm not special. I'd react like a human would, you know? Um, yeah. And I'm ashamed of that, even though it's what every human would do. I want to be special. I want to yeah, like, right. not be pranked, yeah, you know? Right. So that frustrates me. And I think about like the situation, what he said, it's just like, like, don't think of what I do on the outside. You don't know who I am on the inside. Yeah. That's what he was saying, like in yeah. and of itself. Right. So that's the thing about like those movies is just like, yeah, you are seeing the performance of their outward performance, but you don't get to know who those people are on the inside, you know? Yeah, right. And in a way that's kind of doing a disservice to them. I, that's, yeah. I'm not, that's, well, uh, that's, like, that's not me condemning side, that. They also sign off to do it, you know? Like yeah. when you prank somebody, like they have to sign an agreement, like after they do it, to be in the movie. Right, which is um, which is which is which is great that they do that. Because you know? I think like they, also the end of the movie, like this movie has a great uh like end montage of like all the people realizing it was a prank and yeah, like how much fun a lot of these people were like yeah, all, like, yeah, because the thing and, like all yeah. that like you know like when you see someone you have to be like that because. Like Borat did not do that, dude. Borat, the way that Sasha Baron Cohen, I think that whole argument you're making is kind of the Sasha Baron Cohen thing. Yeah, for sure. Because I don't have a problem he, with he doing. Is, let me say, I don't have a problem with them doing that. People into you know yeah. a guy who's at a rodeo going fuck the gay people, fuck yeah, those fairies. yeah. You know he has to trick that guy to sign. Like he, the thing about that, that he's Borat. Oh fucking god. Yeah. You know, all the time. The yeah, cameras yeah. are off. Like, he's yeah. at, you know, so like he has to that's like a whole other level of like holy shit. Uh, yeah, no. Uh, yeah. But you know, because of their non grade, they're doing this one scene and when they get it, they're like, cut, okay, everybody come out and you know, everybody's like, Oh fuck, okay, it was a prank. Yeah. And there are blurred faces in there because so those people are like, I don't, don't want to be, be on movie nuts. because yeah. what I did was kind of wrong you know yeah fucked up yeah yeah you know, so and i and i think that i think that that re, it's important to reveal even though if you don't get to see this a disservice to necessarily not get to see those people in their entirety it's yeah. still important to reveal what are your outward reactions right yeah. because that's the type of thing like i would like to think that it's like it's like a reaction where if i'm angry at something and i just like overreact or like call you stupid or like like if I overreact and call you a stupid fucking retard yeah. for not liking yeah. Crouching Dragon, you know, not be PC or something like that. You know, I might say that and be in the hit in the moment. I'm not mean it. I don't think you're fucking disabled, right? I don't think that. I am disabled but, though. But if I you are disabled. But if I <laughs> but if I but if I said that, I would have said that and not been able to take that back, you know? Right. That's an important lesson for myself right. to know that like i have to learn how to deal with that it's like yeah. i said that i said that to your face and me yeah. not meaning it doesn't take away the fact that i fucking said it you know yeah. Yeah. that's an important yeah. thing to yeah. realize that's yeah. an important yeah. thing to reveal yeah so yeah that trip was fun um mortal combat comes out soon <laughs> really uh, fuck yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you see uh, a trailer for that no, I had no idea. Dude, it looks like fun. You should I'm like in. watch the trailer for that. Fuck, because I'm they're in. going R rated. Really? They're, oh yeah. They're going fucking yeah. the end shot of the trailer is like someone's spine getting ripped out. That's sick. I'm into yeah. that. 
Um, so now, that's, there's new movies coming out that we can see and then that we can talk about. Yeah. And now, that I, well, by the time this comes out, I'll be fully vaccinated. So. Yeah. Um. So. So let's let's just say I think that Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is a uh, buttery orgasm approved. Yeah, um, right. but <laughs> is, uh, I don't for thick, <laughs> not so much. Oh, I would approve it. Approve. Well, so we can approve it. So let's do this. Do a unison approve. Okay. Uh, 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 thick. thick, thick, and butter, butter approved. approved. Boom, 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 boom. boom. Um, I feel bad that I wasn't able to talk about it That's very okay. deeply because I just I'm fried and also <laughs> also I just I can't recollect it very well because yeah. I just wasn't engaged. That well, I'll, I'll I'll promise you this. This is a weirdly forgettable movie. Yeah, movie. I I promise you this. I love this movie. I'm gonna watch it again, and I'll probably watch it with you. I'll force you to sit down with me at some point and we'll watch to it together. Yeah, I'll go back to you later in time. Yeah, it's a good thing. Time. That's what friends are for. They're the force to watch each other to watch okay. movies that they don't really and like. Someday, That's someday the point. I will force you out to watch Punk Truck Love. And my heart will be broken when you're going to turn to me and say, I hated it. I hated it. Yeah. Adam yeah. Sandler's a fucking hack. I don't know hack. who Paul Thomas Anderson Ooh, could sucks. suck my dick. Why did you waste your <laughs> year writing a 20 page paper about this goddamn movie? Waste of fucking time, dude. Waste of time. <laughs> I should see that movie. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. We haven't talked about a PTA movie, which is really bizarre. Are you serious? Uh, yeah, so we should definitely do that. There's a lot of movies that we have. I know talked a about. lot That's about him. Kind of yeah, um, you do. You're kind of an expert a little bit. A little bit. Um, <laughs> all right, everybody. We love you. Wait, 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 wait. What are we doing next week? We have so a special do, event we're gonna next week. Godzilla versus Kong next week. And Justice League. And Justice League. Zack Snyder. Justice Both League. of them, dude. So this will be an HBO Max <laughs> fucking episode. Yeah. Um, and so I'm excited to. I'm hearing good things about both. So I'm excited to do that. Walk. I'm. I'm genuinely excited to watch Justice League. I'm gonna watch the bad version. Bad version. The Zack yeah, Snyder version. The Whedon version. The Whedon version. Yeah. And no, not the yeah, not the Zack Snyder version first. The Whedon version first, and then the Zack Snyder version. Which is I got kind of excited when I remember when Chris Stuntman reviewed the, the original one. He's funny. I mean, it's shit. It's yeah. like a B or something. Like, yeah, you know, it's horrible. He's getting this, the new one a B plus or something. Like, That's a dramatic like, improvement. That's a like, dramatic yeah, improvement. So I'm very curious to see it. Um, I was starting to make fun of it already when I had I I, I, I can't in, believe it's, it's good. Four, three. Yeah, that's the hilarious. Four, three. So I don't know. I, 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 it, I, st- it, I still can't believe that it's good. I'm so excited to watch it because I can't uh, believe it. I hate it. Like, like, yeah. I don't know. But like apparently it's it's a significant improvement um, yeah. over the original one, which yeah. I can totally see. But um, all right, so we're gonna do that. We love you. Follow us yeah. on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. Uh, <laughs> and, and and tell your YouTube? mother, tell tell your mom and father. And father. if you don't have a father, then tell your other mom. If you don't have another mom, <laughs> that's cool too. I just tell your mom, or if you don't have a mom, just tell your dad. If you don't have your dad. Tell your fucking uncle. If you don't have one of those, tell a dog well, or if cat. you don't have a dad, well, you could have an uncle. Anyway, all right, yeah. let's uh, you definitely <laughs> have a dad. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to tell him, though, really. You don't actually have to tell anyone about our podcast. If you yeah. want to, you can just look in the mirror and tell yourself. Look in the mirror, look in your full-body mirror, buck-ass naked, and say, hey, have you seen Thick and Butter? Listen to it before or seen it because we're on YouTube, yeah. as we said. Pre- yeah. YouTube, and, <laughs> and as you look at your naked self, you can reply, "Yes, <laughs> I have listened to thick, listened and watched to Thick and Butter." Yeah, longest sign off of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Bye bye. Bye.